Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Today's Sunday session is brought to you thanks to the fine folks at More Beer. Visit them right now at morebeer.com. I want people to believe in me, and I want people to believe in me when they chase my beer. That's what it's about. You mean you laid underneath it and tried to put his tongue up the bung? <laughs> I like to actually scoop up the yeast uh-huh. and look at it. 7 o'clock came real early that next morning. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks for dumbing that down for us. You did an awesome job. It's all about food and you beer. Punch me in the junk. Man, that thing was thick. The, the point is just beat it like it's your dick. I like to smell it <laughs> afterwards. Are you being sarcastic no. right now? Yeah. Bring your body armor. I ran in my jungle once on a ball valve on a kettle. That's <laughs> a true cheap. happy ending. No. Live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers, craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with, well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is The Session. Hello, uh, my name is Justin Crossley, and I am a recovering Brewing Network host. (laughs) Hi, Justin. I'm relapsing tonight. (laughs) What does that mean? Slowing it? (laughs) I'm, I'm back to give it another shot. Um, yeah, you know, I, I wasn't gone because I was an insane person this time. So that's yeah, like, just, yeah, this was that's a, true. Uh, it's just business. Um, you guys have been doing great since I've been gone. It, it appears. Uh, even reading through tonight's feedback, a lot of good stuff, and um, uh, just all, all around, I've gotten good comments. And uh, I want to thank you personally for making my life a little <laughs> bit easier. Uh, my life has not been very easy for the last couple months. So <laughs> knowing that you guys were here, uh, killing it, apparently. Uh, was a was a big deal to me, and glad, I want you guys to know that. Glad to help out. Yeah, oh, good. I'm glad, glad we uh, could do without you. Right. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, that kind of thing's a big deal. Uh, whenever you're running a, a company, if you can kind of depend on your staff to just get the job done, I don't, yeah. I don't know if you realize how big of a deal that is. It doesn't always happen. Uh, That's true. There are plenty of people who That's work true. for companies that you can't rely on, and you guys. God, lo and behold, are quite reliable. <laughs> I would have thought. Yeah. It only took you 12 years to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I am back, uh, well, at least for a couple weeks yeah. anyway. Well, actually, we're all splintering off to our, uh, form our own, uh, your own podcast network. So Start the, the, yeah, the beering network. Yeah, and the, this is the, it, it's going to be the Home Brewers Network. <laughs> okay. And it's going to be the, the, the Home Brewers Network Navy. Okay. Is our thing. It's similar. Yeah, it's just a little more feminine. Just a little more feminine. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, well, it's I am happy to be back. Um, it, it's exciting to sit in this chair again. <laughs> How does it feel to sit in that chair, JP? Do, it, are, do you hate it? Or? No, it feels it feels good because I don't have as much thinking to do. Good. Yeah, which uh, you know, people would ask me like, "Well, how do you like doing the hosting and, and all this kind of stuff?" And I, I really do enjoy it, but it's very different yeah. than being over here because I can kind of do my own thing and and you know be in my own little world and like just think of weird shit to say. But right. being in that chair, I have to be different 
You have to be in this world. I have to be in that world, <laughs> but I wanted to be different from you as well. I don't want to sure. just do your shtick, right? So, I, yeah. so it was very, it was very hard. And then now being over here, when you're over there, it's like I have to just really fight to not say anything because <laughs> you know I don't like you either thinking or speaking. <laughs> right. So. Right. Exactly. I try to keep you. I try to keep those activities out of the room you're in. <laughs> you, <can sit. laughs> you, you know. See, you have you have grown to know me over, I'm learning. over twelve yeah, years. You I'm learning. It. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. It's it's cool though, man. It's cool. Good. I like I like being over here. Good. Every now and then. All right, good. Well, I'm back for a couple weeks, and then not going to lie, then I'm actually leaving just for a little bit of vacation. <laughs> I'm uh, going to be the first man on Mars. The, yeah. So <laughs> close. I'm just I'm going to Burning Man again. Oh, and, that's uh, right. I need a break. I haven't had a day off in quite some time, and and that's okay. I've been having fun building our Fort Collins location, which um, is finally now open. We opened at the end of July. Um, I'm really proud of the space. Uh, excited to show it to you guys. Doc got to see it. Yeah, he came out. a lot nicer than this dump. Um, I'm, I've been talking to Tasty about some uh, GABF, uh, some pre-GABF stuff that yeah. we're working on. And, um, you know, I'll talk to you, JP, if, we, if we've got some GABF stuff going on for you, too. But I'm excited sure. to show you guys the place. And um, it's a little slower than, you know, that I'm comfortable with, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Concord was, was uh, the, the bar was low here. Which, for sure. <laughs> which is the zone I like to work in. You know, if you think about it, like when we started the BN, yeah. nothing existed, so we could do whatever we wanted. Low-hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. That, that is kind of my motto. And Concord was like that. Um, plus, we, we already just had a big audience. Uh, in Fort Collins, in Colorado, there there are no uh, there's no shortage of places to drink good beer. I think we built one of the I think we built the nicest place to drink beer in mm-hmm. Fort Collins, um, and so now we're just kind of working to let everybody know that. So it'll just take time. That's all. I think so. And I was telling JP, you know, we were just having a, a, a conversation the other day, and I had to evaluate this about myself. To, to be honest, I'm fairly accustomed to instant success. I'm a very lucky person <laughs> yeah. in certain things in my sure. life. You know, there are things that I'm not, but mm-hmm. but in many things, and I think one of them is is even business. I'm a, I'm a very I've had a lot of good luck, good fortune. Uh, and so to start out r- really slow is a new – I'm having to wrap my head around that. Like, oh, shit, what did I do wrong? What's going wrong here? Yeah. And so – but it's actually a very typical p- uh, way to open yeah. a bar, restaurant, any of these things. Most people start out slow. We just have never had that. Um, even – now, I'm not saying the, the BN was, was profitable very quickly. It certainly, <laughs> no, it no, certainly yeah, wasn't. Yeah, think about that one. But, in terms of other, any other way. It yeah. was. A, you know, on our first broadcast, we had so many listeners that we crashed our servers. And uh, so right. there, were, there were definitely measures of success that were, were very instantaneous. It, it was a great idea. We were at the right time at the right place. And so, anyhow, you know, Fort Collins is a little out of my comfort zone, and, and it's going to take some work to, to figure it out, but... I'll give you guys more of the lowdown on all that stuff toward the end of the show. I don't want to spend a bunch of time in it now. But uh, that's where I've been. And uh, thank you again for, for holding down the fort. Uh, as you'll hear in the feedback today, sounds like we've had some of our best interviews we've ever done. And yeah. that's really cool. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, Bevo's been doing a really good job of scheduling guests. It sounds like you guys have some pretty cool guests in here recently. Yeah, she's done okay. <laughs> I've questioned some of them, but you know, for the most part, she's doing all right. Well, there's always something to question. And then I have have promptly ignored him. Yeah, told me to. Like you've taught me to. Yeah, <laughs> told me to eat my own ass. Yeah, when I left, I just I left one note. It was just like <laughs> yeah. ignore JP's comments, uh, and it's, you'll and you'll do fine. Us well. <laughs> yeah. So what? Uh, well, on tonight's program, we have Motor Works Brewing out of Bradenton, Florida, uh, which you know I had to look up on the map. Um, not Florida. Florida. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I've heard of Bradenton, but never of Florida. Florida. I don't really yeah. understand. I don't know about this Florida. Uh, <laughs> He's a good artist, let me tell you. Well, we're going to talk to them all about their, their, their space, their beer, and their location. But just on the map, um, it yeah. actually looks like the coolest location. It's on this weird like little inlet. Um, so they seem to, even if they're not right on the water, the the city is. But not like on the coast. It's like on this cool inlet. It, I think it's in between like uh, Tampa and St. something. 
Petersburg? St. Saint Elsewhere? St. Saint Elsewhere, St. <laughs> Petersburg? That's not right. So it was uh, maybe like just kind of that, that marina or that, that sea town feel, but without being right on the water? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah? And okay. I'm, I'm looking to find out because my just I just wanted to look it up, so I got a little uh, little geographic reference, and I thought, yeah. shit, that place looks like a cool place to be. <laughs> so we'll find all about uh, find out all about the beer scene there and, and what beers they're making. They, they sent us a, a whole bunch of beer. Oh, I really? Saw. Yeah. They sent, I, I, I could drink a bunch. Not only did they send us a large variety of beer, they sent us six packs of oh. all of those beers. Oh, cool. Wow. <laughs> I like when breweries tons do Tons of beer. Because then what happens at the end of the show, listeners, just so you know, like... Um, well, sometimes we don't like the beer. I'll just be honest. But when when <laughs> when we do, and people send six pack, it's it's really cool because then we get to go. Well, you really like this one, and you really yeah. like that one. Yeah. When we just get enough bottles for the show, we end up with like one or two bottles left, and then we have to fight over them. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, whole, it's a whole thing. Tasty's yeah. arms are still healing from the knife wounds from the August <laughs> Shell <laughs> session. Yeah, yeah. I did want some of those. Yeah. So they sent a bunch of beer, and um, I think one cool thing we'll get to learn at, learn about, just a little teaser, is one of the beers that they sent is a coffee porter, and they roast their own coffee beans at the brewery. Oh, perfect. They Which also is... sent us a bag of coffee. Oh, they did. Oh, Which nice. I oh, kept. yeah. It's all labeled oh, and everything that. with their uh, own brand. I, like I didn't really... really keep it. No, I didn't. Wow. I like the way you said us. For your poker nights? Well, Beaver Wits. <laughs> Beaver wits. So I think that's really cool. Of course, we've heard about uh, coffee porters before and sourcing the local great uh, roastery and, mm, and coffee and house. Yeah. Um, but I like that they did it themselves. So we'll find out all about that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Also, they've got one of uh, my personal favorite styles. I know JP likes it. I know Doc likes it. But they sent us a Vienna lager. Oh, my oh. God. So Forget ex- about it. Uh, but don't worry. They also sent, uh, like, I think a juicy IPA. <laughs> and a regular, you know, so it's, we, it's a well-rounded. Can we stop uh, making IPAs these days? It's, it's almost 2018, for God's sakes. Nah, Get probably, over it. It's probably not going to happen. I know. Um, so, I saw we had two IPAs on tap from Society. I'm like, really? Yeah. Are you serious? Two IPAs from the same brewery? Get out of town. Give me give me one of their dark beers, for God's sakes. I'm not going to lie. I had the same thought because I went to the bar to order a beer from yeah. our bartender, Nick, there. And he said, oh, hey, both of the societies are really good. And I said, oh, cool. And I, I hadn't seen what they are yet. And, yeah. I, and I look up and I go, okay. Uh, Society Apprentice, that's an IPA, cool. Um, (laughs) Society Pupil, American IPA. Okay, well now how do I decide which one I want? Now it's just Rochambeau. Right. Because, yeah. Well, you get both, and when, like Doc said, one will taste slightly different. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Well, I'm having the Apprentice, uh-huh. so I Society Boys, I do promise to have the pupil later tonight, and then I'll let you know if it tastes any different. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I know you're waiting for that yeah. evaluation. They're like, oh my God. Yeah. And they sound like lead-ins. Got the Apprentice and the pupil. And the pupil, yeah. So, all right. Uh, so we got a good show for you tonight. Uh, happy to be back. Let me get through a few announcements for you. Our good friend Sully over at the 21st Amendment, um, which, of course, did you guys already do the whole discussion on the 21st Amendment yet? No, not uh, yet. You didn't talk. And we don't have to do it now. It came, I don't, it came I don't out have la- much information. It came out last week, so right. we didn't have a show, so we didn't get to talk about it. Did I say it on air or just personally that I was absolutely positive that Sully was in the next couple people to sell and and he didn't sell the brewery as mm-hmm. i understand i think he's going to be on with you guys in a couple weeks that's so right let's let him give you the full story but i do know that yeah. at least a, a portion of the brewery i think got, it was 25 percent. oh okay i think got sold to to brooklyn yeah and funk works and funk works yeah also in fort collins by the way yeah um and and a great Great group of people over there, too. They brewed a special beer for our grand opening. Oh, cool. Um, But not just that. um, Actually, let me rephrase this entirely. We went to their brewery, and they let us blend a beer. Oh, that's uh, fun. So we ended up with Peach Grenade. Um, that we did these. That we did these two uh, amazing um, sour beers. Pineapple yeah. would have been so appropriate. A lot of times, call it a pineapple. It's true, yeah. but it's uh, peach season in Colorado. Oh, I see. And I don't know if I didn't know this. Maybe other people did, but peaches are a Colorado thing. 
Uh, they, huh? they grow world class peaches there, uh, mm. which I didn't know. I didn't thought know it was, it was a, a Georgia thing. Yeah, so Georgia peaches. Too, yeah. It's apparently a Colorado thing too. So we blended these couple sour beers, and then they went and added fresh peaches to it, uh, which is really good. Um, so I want to thank Gordon and his team at Funk Works. Gordon has always been a fan of ours, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you remember, but he's the guy who made me cry at Great American Beer Festival because the first year they opened, I saw this guy go up and win all these awards, and they ended up winning small brewery of the year Mm -hmm. and i was sitting there streaming the awards and i was like oh this is how cool is this and then later that day at the session this guy comes up to me and says hey i just wanted to thank you you know we learned uh, so much from you i wouldn't be a brewery without you and i saying all these nice things and i recognize him and i'm like aren't you the guy who just won like small brewery of the year (laughs) yeah and he tells me yes and i totally clam up i'm like let's go that's right i remember (laughs) that excuse me for a second gordon yeah, <laughs> sort of so, moved right now. So he's been a fan for a long time, and I'm a fan of Funkworks. And um, anyhow, so yeah, this two and a Funkworks thing, along with Brooklyn Brewery, which I guess then is also along with is it Sapporo that owns Brooklyn Kieran. Brewery? Kieran, thank you, Kieran. Kieran. Um, the other Japanese, uh, that's right, brewing conglomerate. Right. Uh, well, we'll let Sully tell all that. Um, I think that. If I know Sully, he did everything the right way and and is still looking to grow that 2-1-A brand and get the beer out as far as possible. Um, Yeah, I think it was just for distribution. Sounds like it. I think they're making a distribution network between the three of them. Which is a really smart move. I'm excited to hear uh, from Sully about that. Yeah, me too. And Funkworks being a much smaller brewery, what a smart move on their part to, uh, you know, I think they're they're maybe looking to expand right now in terms of building up their brew house. And uh, what a good deal. You know, a unique twist is that uh, uh, 21st Amendment is going to be brewing Boston Lager out here. No. Yeah, they're getting a bottling line, too. You're kidding. No? Wait, they're actually going to be brewing Boston Lager here. That's the plan. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to go to the because airport now. Jim Cook and Sully are two of my favorite people in the beer industry. I think that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well,. I guess you guys are going to get a lot of stories from. Sully. I said Boston. I mean Brooklyn Lager. I'm sorry, the oh, Brooklyn. Uh, you, yeah, you said Boston <laughs> Lager. That's where I was like, what? No, I'm sorry, I'm, I misspoke. Bro, uh, uh, Brooklyn Lager. The bro- okay, now now of course I should have picked up on that yeah. because Brooklyn is yeah, too. Uh, okay, well I like that too uh, yeah. uh, because Brooklyn Lager has always been a great beer. Yeah. So, all right, well don't fuck it up, Sully. Yeah. Let's see. Well, Sully will be on in a couple weeks. Uh, I won't be here. I'll be naked in the desert by then. Um, but you guys are going to get the full scoop. But what is coming up is the 21st Amendment August Fest celebration is happening oh, yeah. uh, on August 26th. Uh, it's from noon to 6. It's free admission. Um, live music from the Stone Foxes, which is cool. Um, beer tickets will end up being uh, 5 bucks a piece, but you can get in for free if you're bringing the family. It is family friendly. Um, and then you can also get a deal with like four tickets plus a 21st Amendment mug for 21 bucks. There'll be free parking, and, and I've been there before at their large events i think i guess it was their august fest last I, year i was there last year it's a great event yeah a lot of entertainment it's, it's uh, family friendly and all that yeah and the space is so big that the yeah. parking is easy so mm-hmm. it'll be free parking but they're also doing a free shuttle from the san leandro bart station to the 21st amendment and it's a very close ride right there so live music all day beer stations uh there's going to be a rare beer station with hourly beer releases uh, live art, covered seating, which is which is smart. Really. <laughs> this does not happen often. Thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, a kid zone with two bounce houses, a cigar lounge for adults. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Which That's is super where cool. Where you can be naked. And yeah. Are the kids? <laughs> and uh, local food and drink vendors. So go check it out. Um, that is Saturday, August twenty sixth, from noon to six at the Twenty First Amendment Brewery in San Leandro, um, and that should be a good time. And then oh. right next door, interestingly enough, and I know that these guys are friends, so it looks like they timed it appropriately. Um, Drake's Brewing Company is having their 28th anniversary party. 28 years. That's the, crazy, dude. The, there is not many craft breweries. And I think, of course, you shouldn't ever quote me on anything, but I think the only Bay Area brewery that is that old is Anchor. I don't yeah. know that there's another craft yeah, brewery around that's anybody. been around for 28 years. Like um, what's the Pacific Brewing Company or oh, whatever? Oh, Pacific Coast? Yeah. They may have been, that little pub, yeah. 
A little brew pub. Long time. Um, anyhow, yeah, 28 years. Burps. Yeah. More than people I know. Um, they opened in 1988, so you can math that if you I want. I can't math it, actually. I couldn't even. 98, 98 to, to 2008. Exactly the same age. Mm. Um, One well, year 20, younger. 28 years. Yeah. They'll be 28 next year. 20. 20. God, see, we're, none of us can math. <laughs> I can math. No, I'm just saying I, I, I math. think no, that 28. makes 28. Yeah, you're right. 28 this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Two 28 year Because when did Drake's open? Uh, Drake's open in 89. Pacific Brewing opened in 88. I see. Okay. Well, they're celebrating their 28th anniversary party. <laughs> also August 26th. But theirs is from 5 to 9. Yeah. And they're they're right next door. Yeah. So you can have a great day. Noon to 6 and then 5 to 9. Yeah, noon to 6, Walk five around to the nine. block. It isn't yeah. far at all. You no. walk around the block. Um, and uh, that's also going to be a great party. The Drake's people, well, they just, they kind of know how to party. I'm going to be honest. They're a great job. They've been around a while. Oh, by the way, one of the 21A beers is going to be the collab I did with uh, with uh, Sean. One of the, the ones rare beers at that, August Fest? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I think it said 3 o'clock or something like that. And then we're going to release that here at the Hopper Date as well. On Monday, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, well, at the Drake's Fest, also free entry, and there are drink pa- uh, packages, and you can order your drink packages early just to make sure that you get in. You know, it could be one of those things that it, it, even though admission is free, they, they could get too full. So if you get your drink package first, you're guaranteed entry, um, and then you, you get a, a, a cool, uh, like you already have your drink tickets. So they've got a VIP package for 75 bucks. And then just a party on package for twenty bucks. Um, so they're going to have twenty five epic Drake's brews on tap, including the Void. Um, and then there'll be an alumni booth featuring guest brews from their friends, um, rare and retired cellar releases in the go to beer section. Um, all kinds of things going on. You can go over to drinkdrakes dot com to get information about that. But it sounds like, and I won't be here unfortunately uh, for me. August 26th is a great day for beer be in there. the East Bay. I'm going to go to both. Yeah. You are going to go to both? I'm going to get on that bus. Yeah. It'll go to Drake's through that same bus, I'm sure. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Tasty good. bus. There you go. Um, all right, so those are a couple big things happening on the events calendar right now that we wanted to let you know about. I will keep you up to date on a few other things, including our pre-GABF events happening out in Fort Collins and uh, anything happening here at the Hop Grenade in Concord, too. You can support us by doing your Amazon shopping. Just hit the Amazon button on our homepage. It's in several places there. If you click Amazon, both for the U.K. and the U.S., uh, you can do your shopping, and we get a little chunk of it. You don't pay any more money, and it's a cool way to support us. A lot of you do it, and I appreciate it. You can also subscribe and join the BN Army for as little as two bucks a month, uh, and it helps us keep the shows going. And also, you're entered into the More Beer monthly donation giveaway where you can get $100 to spend at More Beer. Pretty good, dude. More Beer, of course, the sponsor of this show. Every session that we do, uh, whether I'm here or not, they they even support JP as a host. That's uh, right. Which is very cool. They they're, do. They're still um, doing They're still doing that after all these years. They don't know that they do it, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can uh, join that army and do it that way. Plus, it makes sure that you get our newsletter and pre-sales into any of our events, like Spring Bruce Festival or our anniversary party, which, when we do it, sells out. Uh, <laughs> lots of things like that. Get updates and pictures. And weird shit over on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Send feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. And at this point, you can pretty much send everything else to JP at the J at the JP. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I think it's JP at thebrewingnetwork.com. Um, hey, do we have a Twitter game? We do. See, some things Bingo. never change. Our Twitter game is brought to you today by the American Homebrewers Association, who, if you haven't checked it out yet, have put out the coolest app in beer, the Brew Guru app, uh, especially and, and maybe even specifically if you're a member of the AHA, which, of course, you should be. You can still sign up to be a member through our website. But uh, if you're a member, the Brew Guru app shows you every place that the member benefits uh, occur. And in other words, it helps you get all of your money back for your membership, which is pretty cheap anyway um but you can find out the deals on homebrew shops uh bars like ours breweries yeah. everything i know tasty uses it frequently now uh whenever you're yeah. around you just especially if i'm out of town someplace i don't know i know where all the discounts are in this area yeah but uh yeah if you're ever visiting this area and you go, go to russian river it's happy hour pricing anytime with that card oh really anytime oh i didn't know that anytime 
shit, all these years. I'm like, it's like I, because, less than $4 a pint for a pint. Because you know? they have like happy hour Sunday, which there's so many people there, I just avoid it. But I can now go on Mondays? Yeah. Wow. I love this. All right. So check it out. The Brew Guru app will tell you all of this stuff so you don't have to guess and be a dummy like me. (laughs) All right. What's our Twitter game? Uh, Well, after 12 years of beer radio, I think it's about time the Brewing Network get involved in making alcohol instead of just talking about it. But I think we're going to start a winery. Okay. Because why not? We were, I think we're all bored with beer. Bore, beer is really boring now. And, uh, you know, who wants to be in? I'd rather talk about it than make it and talk about it. Yeah. So we're opening a winery. I love and I want to know. Thank you. And I want to know what it should be called. Okay. Yeah. The Brewing Network's opening a winery. And what should it be called? That's our Twitter game for today. All right. How about some feedback? Yeah, yeah. feedback. Feedback's brought to you today by the Beer Law Center. Uh, our good friend John over at BeerLawCenter.com helps us out all the time. He can help you. Uh, I have to send him a new thing. I just found somebody selling an exact replica of our hop grenade over on Etsy. It's on like a hat. I fucking hate Etsy, dude, for that reason. <laughs> they did a really nice job, but actually it's a cool hat. But I have to write to them and say, A, send me all of the hats that you've made, and then stop. No, do it. And CC Coda, so you hit that hat on your side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but luckily, John takes care of all that stuff for us, Good. so uh, go over to BeerLawCenter.com. I had someone on Etsy rip off a design of mine from Etsy and sell it from Etsy yeah. on Etsy. Okay. I, the, Etsy's the worst because yeah. people don't care. Like, you go, and, and there are people infringing on everybody's copyright. Any t- it doesn't matter. It's, it's lawless. Just, it's, yeah, it's terrible. It's the oh. Wild West over there. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> so if you're shopping on Etsy, be sure to shop, uh, you know, uh, original content, please. Right. Yeah. All right. It's a really long feedback segment. Yeah. And we're right up against when we should be speaking to our guests. So you want to take a break? Well, I wonder if we should do it at the end. Sure. You want to do feedback sure. at the we end? We always do that. Too. Well, I know, but here's Give me why. Give built up, and then uh, <laughs> I know. Then, then, well, there's a lot. Put a to, thumb over it. There's a lot to look through on this, um, and a lot to talk about. I think you guys have gotten some feedback since I've been gone. We've gotten some feedback, yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with things that you are unaware of. Yeah. And so we have to backstory a lot of Johns. So. <laughs> A lot of what? Johns. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, you, need, you need your Johns filled in. Yeah, so I don't want to rush through it. I, I feel like we should. You want to savor it. We, yeah, this is a yeah. whole thing. It's like reuniting with an old lover, Justin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, so why don't we do that? <laughs> okay. Instead of doing feedback right now, and John will get two plugs out of this, so he'll be, he'll be happy. Yeah. He likes being plugged twice. <laughs> yeah. Send him your Johns. Send John your Johns. <laughs> two plugs. All right. Well, before the break, then, I'll just uh, let you know about the third annual California Craft Beer Summit and Beer Festival. That's happening September 7th through the 9th, and it's the premier event for the craft brewing industry. Network with established and -and up-and-coming brewers. Learn from equipment vendors and suppliers and get tips on how to perfect and improve your homebrewed beer. Get the chance to hear brewing industry innovators and pioneers talk about their days as homebrewers and share stories from their startup experience. Educational sessions there include Ask the Brewmaster and How to Start a Brewery. Simple as it gets there. Uh, It'll help you build a strong foundation in the beer industry and continue to hone your craft. The three-day event ends with the largest craft beer festival in California, featuring more than 160 breweries from across California, right in front of the state capitol, which, by the way, is one of the coolest things I've ever seen when I went to that festival. It's really fun. It's a great festival. Yeah. Uh, The Summit's a valuable educational event for everyone, whether you're looking to start your own brewery, pair beer with food, taste and discuss different beer styles, or advance your understanding of distribution channels. Tickets are available uh, for one day or the entire summit at um, craftbeersummit.com. Early bird discount already ended. That's right. So those of you who have been waiting, uh, that's 10 bucks you could have kept in your pocket. Too late for you. Actually, I don't know if it's 10 bucks. No, it was July 10th is when it ended. I don't know how much the discount was. It was probably more than 10 bucks. Um, Probably, yeah, for sure. So the rest of you go to Craft Beer, uh, California Craft Beer, sorry, CACraftBeerSummit.com, CACraftBeerSummit.com. Get your tickets. Check it out. It is a worthwhile event. I had a great time at it when I went well, and uh, wish I could go again. And on the last show of this month, we again have a pair of tickets for the fest. Oh, good. Yeah. So just we're going to give the, those away. Just the beer festival? Just part? the beer festival. We, we nice. gave the um, the other package away in uh, in uh, Ju- uh, Ju- July. In okay. July. In July. Yeah. All right. 
So giving stuff away. But go check it out, cacraftbeersummit.com. All right, so here's what we'll do. We will take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to our guest out of Florida, MotorWorks Brewing, and probably start drinking some of their beer. Let's I do would it. imagine, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, don't see why, I don't see why we would wait on that. Why not? Yeah. All right. Hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Brewcasters. The Brewcasters. On the Brewing Network. Are you a member of the White Labs Customer Club? If not, you should be. It's the easiest way to earn free stuff for turning in your old homebrew labels from either vials or pure pitch. All you have to do is save your labels and redeem them for things like free yeast, an exclusive White Labs t-shirt or sweatshirt, and even the opportunity to brew with the yeast man himself, Chris White. Signing up is easy. Just go to whitelabs.com slash customer club, fill out the registration form, and then mail in your labels. They will return the favor by sending you awesome White Labs swag. Go sign up today at whitelabs.com slash customer club. White Labs, pure yeast and fermentation since 1995. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! Do you like beer? They make beer. Watch out! Do you like friends and fun? They make friends and fun. Watch out! Do you still like to have a good time? The 21st Amendment. Watch out! The 21st Amendment in San Francisco, located at 563 2nd Street, two blocks from the building where baseball is seen and played. Try their beers in the pub or try them in the can. Featuring... Monk's Blood. Made with real monk. Watch out! So why not have the best time of your life? Go to the 21 and Sean O'Sullivan will personally greet you with a can of... Monk's Blood. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! This advertisement is not in any way affiliated nor associated with the 21st Amendment Bar and Pub, nor its subsidiaries or affiliates. This telecast is not copywritten by the 21st Amendment for the private use of the Brewing Network. Any use of this telecast without Jamil Zanishev's consent is prohibited. Suck it, JP. Brewing Great Beer is a process of continuous learning, and the best books on every aspect of brewing can be found at Brewers Publications, with more than 50 awesome titles like Modern Homebrew Recipes, by Gordon Strong. Designing Great Beers, the ultimate guide to brewing classic beer styles by Ray Daniels. American Sour Beers, innovative techniques for mixed fermentations by Michael Tonsmeyer. For the Love of Hops, the practical guide to aroma, bitterness, and the culture of hops by Stan Hieronymus. And Radical Brewing, recipes, tales, and world-altering meditations in a glass by Randy Mosher, plus many, many more. These are the books and the authors with the knowledge to push your brewing farther than you thought possible and you'll find them all at fine homebrew and book retailers everywhere and visit the website at brewerspublications.com brewers publications all the best on beer and brewing since the first time the brewing network microphones turned on more beer was behind it More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer's social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to MoreBeer.com today and take advantage of The Buzz, The Forum, The Learning Center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Marin Brewing Company in Northern California has been making award-winning beers for more than 25 freaking years. Today, I want to tell you about their new 12-ounce cans of Mount Tam Pale Ale. The good stuff, Mount Tam is bright gold. 5.5% ABV to keep you feeling good and has been winning awards since 1989. If you're visiting the Bay Area, get your butt out to Marin Brewing Company. They pour tasty beers and serve great food every day until midnight. Come in for a tour, stay for the food, and pick up 
a six-pack of cans of Malcam Pale Ale to enjoy at home, camping, biking, or whatever the hell you do. Owner Brandon Moylan has this to say about Marin Brewing Beers. It's freaking awesome. Marin Brewing has won more than 100 gold medals in international competitions. Check out MarinBrewing.com for all their award-winning beers, food, and merch. Marin Brewing Company in Larksburg, California. Award-winning taste, refreshing finish. It's freaking awesome. This is Corey King from Side Project Brewing, and you're listening to the session on the Brewing Network. Welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Welcome. I, I personally appreciate it. Uh, before we move on to our guest, MotorWorks Brewing Company, uh, don't forget about our good friends over at Great Fermentations. You can go to greatfermentations.com and check them out. They've got the largest catalog of Blickman products on the web, and their staff is some of the best trained in the biz in using Blickman products. They offer top-notch customer service and same-day shipping on so many items. Check them out at greatfermentations.com. And be sure to like them on Facebook, which is GR8 Fermentation, uh, and find them on Instagram with the same address, GR8 Fermentation. Thanks to Great Fermentations for hanging out with us and supporting the Brewing Network. I appreciate it. All right. On the program today, we should have MotorWorks Brewing Company on the line out of Florida with us. We're looking to talk with Bob and Barry. Guys, are you with us? Yeah, we're here. Oh, it worked. Look at that. <laughs> Still works. See, I've been gone so long. And I was trying to change the settings. To just fuck with me? Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> I, I didn't care enough to get here in time. Well, we've got uh, now you guys going to have to make sure I, I pronounce your names right. Bob Ha. Hey. Hey. It's, yep, it's Bob Hay. But it's Bob Hay with two A's? It is. That's right. Uh, your parents were just messing with you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. we, we've got Bob Hay, uh, who I have listed as the head brewer there, and uh, Barry Elwonger. Yep, that's fanatic. Close enough. Okay, uh, Barry, what's, <laughs> what's your? Do you have a title there? Titles are weird. I know, uh, Mister. Well, my <laughs> yeah, uh, my title I think is Barry, but uh, my <laughs> business card reads uh, Director of Sales and Marketing. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Well, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us, guys. It's good to be here. Now, you guys are from Bradenton, Florida, which I was looking up on the map. Now, I know <laughs> I, I know nothing about Bradenton, Florida, but I will say, I was saying at the beginning of the program, on the map, it looks like the coolest place in Florida. You guys are on this like weird inlet, and it's right in between two awesome cities. I'm looking at it right now. Tell me about the town. Yeah, it's an interesting little city, kind of artsy. It's uh, actually um, so uh, just uh, south of St. Pete and Tampa. They're both directly north of us. St. Pete's about twenty-five minutes north. Okay, and then uh, we're directly no- uh, we are north of uh, Sarasota. But it's a cool little city that has a uh, you know a bunch of beaches and little artsy town. Pretty cool spot. It's, I'm looking at it right. It's a weird shaped city, man. It's like long, <laughs> and then there's a section in the middle that seems to be annexed and is in some other town or something. It's very weird. But uh, but do you see what I'm cool. saying? I do see what you're saying. And of course, he just confirmed that there's all these cool beaches. Like it just looks like it's in a really cool part of the state. For that sure, yeah. I've a little never heard of before. Yeah. Uh, how long have you guys been That's open good. there? Uh, so just south of four years. We opened uh, January of uh, 2014. Okay. Congratulations on your on on sticking it out for Still four years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time anymore. All the time. You know, <laughs> so um, are are either of you uh, one of the founders, or at least know the the story uh, around starting the brewery? Yeah, we've actually both been with it uh, since the beginning of it. So okay. the company's owned outright by a husband and wife, and me and Bob make up the rest of our board of directors. And uh, we've both been here since the beginning. He actually came on a little bit before me, and they're like, all right, we've got a damn good brewer. Now we need someone to sell this. Right. <laughs> smart, <laughs> smart, smart. So uh, why start the brewery there? Insanity. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> like pain, apparently. Uh, are- uh, but on this note, it's um, – 
it was one of those things in Florida at the time, there was uh, only when we opened, I think we were like the 37th brewery in the state. And now there's well over 200. Mm. Uh, so we saw a need of, uh, you know, just kind of having another uh, really good, solid uh, production brewery out there because the Florida marketplace is just huge in terms of uh, overall beer drinkers down here. So, you know, we saw a need uh, to, you know, bring some great local beer to the Florida marketplace. Uh, of those 37 at the time that were before us, uh, there was only a handful of them that were really uh, doing production to a bigger spec. Okay. Now, you say production brewery, but in, I was kind of just trying to look for images of the place, get a picture of you guys. Um it actually looks like you have a really sweet space to come visit too, though. But you're, are you yeah, saying you're, it's you're just a, pro- so is it a production facility with just a really nice tap, uh, a tasting room? Is that what's going on? Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we, we chose that location. We got pretty lucky. Um, the outdoor beer garden is, um, largest one in the state. I think we've, 12,000, 13,000 13, square yeah. foot beer garden. <laughs> Jesus. Massive. Wow. Uh, with a 150-year-old uh, live oak tree. It's just gorgeous. I saw that tree. Um, so, I mean, that, that really played, that played into it a lot. Okay. Uh, that, picking that location. Gators are no also, gators. Uh, you know, have a building big enough to actually field the production size that we were trying to do and ability to scale up into it. I'm sure you guys know tons of breweries that open up and, you know, six months into it starts to catch in the marketplace and they're out of space already. Yeah. We didn't want to run into that issue. So the building kind of had that uh, going for it too. What size is the building? 27,000. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. You guys went for it. <laughs> oh my God. And what, what size is your brew house? <laughs> or I, if you've changed it, I want to know what size the brew house was when you moved in. <laughs> well, we started with a little pilot system, three and a half barrel, um, <laughs> but we already we had already ordered uh, oh. our thirty barrel system. Okay, um, it was just uh, still being built as we were opening up. So uh, the see. three and a half barrel system, which is still there, um, is still our pilot system, and that's how we start uh, any new recipe. Okay. And I love that. Forgive me. I was only laughing because I'm imagining this, t- seeing this pilot system in the building that you just described. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, that's, you guys really went for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was and, and, you know, people wanted to know why we kept running out of beer. <laughs> yeah, they're like, wow, this whole building. You're like, yeah, well, we'll use it one day. Uh, <laughs> how long yeah, did it, it six months. What, uh, six months, is that what you said? Yeah, six months to get the new the thirty barrel system in. Yeah, you know who did that is the two and A Sully. Right, they bought half the building and they're like, well, we're going to use it eventually, and we need to you know get the water, so let's just let's just get everything at the new and, location and, yeah. and grow into it. You're right, and I actually I like your style that you know I think maybe a lot of people would have waited the six months for the big brew house to arrive, but. Tell me about your philosophy. It sounds like you thought, well, we have a little brew system. We can make enough beer for the tasting room, so let's go for it. Oh, God, no. We were the number one account for, like, 30 breweries as guest tabs. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, interesting. We had, you know, just uh, when we opened, we had four of our tabs and 26 guest tabs, and uh, we were uh, <laughs> the biggest mover for a lot of breweries, which they loved at the time, and we loved having it because, you know, we just love beer, so it was, it was kind of cool. Very cool. And then yeah, and we had a lot. Go right ahead. I was going to say we we had, you know I've I've got a, a, a good background in um, uh, distributing uh, even before um, this brewing job. So I, I really liked bringing in um, a lot of different beers, uh, not just um, you know local craft which we had, uh, but also um, you know. Uh, some of the uh, imported stuff that I thought was uh, important for, um, you know, some of the younger customers to, to actually see and understand where a lot of these ideas were coming from. Well, it helped. It's, it probably helped you build a culture there, too. You know, as beer fans, it wasn't just about your beer, but you were able to kind of let the community know we're, we're here because we love beer. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, now you've got the, the big, the big brew house in, um, if you don't mind me asking some kind of, uh, not just technical questions, but business questions. A lot of our listeners want to know this stuff. Um, I'm curious how much of your sales still happens out of the, the tap room there, especially with it just being so large and, and so cool. Um, are you still doing a really significant amount out of the tap room right there? 
Yeah, absolutely. To be honest, uh, you know, we're just now and we've been distributing for um, just over three years. We started distributing about two months after uh, the big system came in. Uh, right now is the first year that the distribution is actually passing the um, uh, tasting room side of it. I mean, oh. we have a very, very busy tasting room, which is awesome, but that's afforded us the ability to be very organic in our growth. And I think that's super important. There's a lot of guys that are just flooding the marketplace with beer. And, you know, we're very stern about wanting to have our beer as fresh as possible. And we have been very, uh, you know, kind of poignant about making sure that we're working with the right distributors and working in a footprint that makes sense before we move into a, a bigger footprint. Got it. Well, that makes sense, and it, like you kind of mentioned, that is it's very fortunate. That, that is a luxury. If a brewery can really, and, and many can if, if you do it right, can just nail it out of the tasting room right out of the gate and just sell all that beer. The, the, margin, yeah. the margins are higher. You get to control the beer. You can control the culture. And then later distribute as necessary. That's a very fortunate position to be in. Absolutely. So, yeah. That was kind of our philosophy out the gate was to just make sure that we do it right and do it smart. But, uh, you know, since then, the, the distribution footprint we cover is actually pretty big now. We cover most of uh, the state of Florida and part of Ohio, actually. Okay. We just send up to some specialty shops up there. We have a distributor that we work with on uh, some stuff, and they have a couple of different distributorships. But uh, they wanted us to send some beer up to Ohio for them. We're like, yeah, we're happy to do so. So, you know, we're up on some of the specialty stores up there with a few of our cans as well, which is pretty cool. Got it. All right. Well, we're going to keep sprinkling in for information about the brewery, and I, and I want to know about your local scene there and, and some more about the history. But in the meantime, we have your Vienna lager in our glass, uh, which you thank you so much for sending us beer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, always makes the interview go better. Um, so right. tell us about the beer. Well, um, Vienna lager, obviously, uh, V-Twin is the, the brand name. Um, you know, that one, a lot, like a lot of our beers that uh, ended up getting, you know, canned and, uh, pretty popular. Um, we, you know, did a test batch and, um, the idea, uh, was, uh, kind of a, uh, Cinco de Mayo, um, uh, celebration that was going on at the time, uh, in town and, uh, want to try to brew a beer that, that kind of made some sense, um, with it, uh, since a lot of it does come out of that, you know, um, I guess, uh, Central America, uh, some of those, uh, styles of beer that are brewed down there yeah. and, uh, didn't want to just do a light beer, just wanted something, uh, with a little bit more flavor. And, um, when we started selling it in the bar, it took off real fast. Nice. Um, I didn't expect it. Um, I, I really, you know, thought that we were probably going to go, uh, with, um, you know, a, a Kolsch, uh, rather than the, um, Vienna lager. Uh, but we got a, a, a medal that year at the GABF with this beer, and wow. that was the end of that. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun story that day also. I just This is one of my favorite stories with me and Bob because that was my first GABF, and uh, he's medaled out there before in his previous life, but uh, this was my first time being out there with the brewery. And uh, the beer at the time had a different brand name. And I, it's the one time I've let the staff veto me on a brand name. I didn't have something at the time. I was like, screw it, we'll go with yours. Yeah. And then I came up with V-Twin, and uh, we were out. I, I submitted it to JBF. We, I picked the beers. I sent it, and I sent it under a different name and didn't tell anybody. Oh, there so you me go. and Bob were sitting in the crowd. <laughs> our first beer that pops up, and we catch the medal, and I slap him across the chest. I'm like, holy crap, dude, that's our beer. We just won. He's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't know. We don't have that beer. What? Yeah. What? They're like, V-Twin who? Uh, well, I text messages from the home base, and everyone there was like, "I think we just want a beer, but I'm not sure if it's ours." And I was like, right. "Yeah, it's ours." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, I did. That. I changed that. <laughs> I think it's a great name, a good marketing that obviously goes along with the MotorWorks branding. So, good job on that. Um, also, I'm a fan of of a Kolsch, but. I'm a bigger fan of a Vienna, mm -hmm. and so I like your decision to do this. This beer, to me, I'd like to know more about the, the ingredients and, and the recipe, because this one is seems to me like kind of a cross between a, a standard Mexican lager and a Vienna lager. Like, it has the characteristics of just a straight Mexican lager. Mm -hmm. um, now, mind you, my pal has been out of the studio for about 12 weeks, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I'm just saying it kind of falls right in between where it has some of the really nice um, lighter malt characteristics of a Mexican lager mm-hmm. and then the nice characteristics of a Vienna where you're, you're putting some of that color and some more and of that. the flavor that goes with it. And more of that body in yeah. there. No, the flavor, it's got a malt flavor. It's really nice. Absolutely. It's not malty, but a malt flavor. It's really it good. does. So can you tell us about the, the malt bill and, and the hops? And you can you can dive in as deep as you want because our listeners are, are, are geeky. Yeah, and they like they Nerds. like to know, like yep. to know it all. Yeah, I mean, it's um, uh, Munich malt base. Um, so, you know, it is uh, almost uh, 100% Munich malt um, okay. going into it. Now, uh, the alcohol content is definitely um, under 5%. Um, so we listed at 4.7, and that's pretty accurate. Um, but the, um, the malt itself is, um, I think the only thing that isn't Munich is the, um, crystal 65 that's in there. Okay. Um, uh, to give it that, that color, everything else is, <laughs> but it's a lighter beer. And I think that that's why it, um, it doesn't come as, uh, across as, uh, biscuity or bready as, um, uh, some of the, the heavier, um, versions of this style. Um, but I, I really was t- trying to stick with, um, just a, um, you know, much more of a traditional, uh, Vienna lager style rather than, um, some of the, uh, the stronger or even dry hopped versions that uh, we have here in the U.S. Uh, I just wanted a nice, easy drinking beer. That's really what it was. And um, we used, uh, you know, um, a lot of uh, German hops, of course, um, Hallertau and um, Tetanang. Um, and, you know, uh, Tetanang is uh, certainly one of my favorite um, uh, in using uh, in lagers. So I think it gives it a nice, spicy, saws like character. It does have that. There is a good spice character to it, and I was going to ask you about that, so I'm glad you mentioned it. The Tetanang is a good hop. And when you say Munich, are you, are you talking about light Munich in terms of the uh, Lullabon? Yeah. yeah the, so, yeah, the, the base is, I think, a 3.5 Lullabon okay. Okay, um, Munich base malt. Right. And then probably like no so, more than 3 or 4% of the Crystal 60, uh, 65 or whatever. Uh, Crystal 65, you know, you're going to ask me percentages. Like, uh, oh, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> you, knew, you knew we were going to do it. Even if you can uh, get close, I that's throw okay. a bag in there. That's <laughs> good. You know what? I brought, I brought my uh, memory with me on the iPad, so uh, I figured go. you might ask me questions like that. Plug um, into the Matrix, dude. The, so did you guys ever, uh, did you guys ever make the Kolsch? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we actually do a, a ton of Kolsch uh, as well still. It was going to be the flagship, but again, after the GABF medal, we didn't want to run <laughs> right. to market with two loggers, especially <laughs> when we were just getting out there, just, you know, time and tank and all that. Yeah. So we kind of kept the Kolsch uh, for our uh, tasting room and small distribution and the, the very, very hyper-local uh, footprint. Um, but we still do a ton of it, and we're doing a big expansion right now. So when that's done, we're actually going to start canning it. Sorry I didn't send it, but I didn't want to send you a growler or something. Uh, yeah. well, we a package the, a over here. We, yeah, we are not going to complain about yeah. the, the beer that you sent. Don't so, worry about so that. You, so in, in the 30 barrel system, you're, you're, you have, you're, just limited, you're limiting that to a local area. So you're selling a lot of beer, it sounds like. Locally. Well, yeah, local. that specific brand. So with our Cruiser that's Kolsch, not- it's actually it goes uh, neck and neck in our tasting room with our um, IPA. Um, so that beer does a ton in the local footprint and, you know, just trying to get those people to, uh, start appreciating local beer and craft beer in general, you know, get that macro lager drinker to convert over. So we crush that beer there. And then we do, uh, because of our local footprint and people that go to our bar, we of course naturally have accounts that want to do it. So we kind of, uh, put that into the Tampa Bay marketplace, but we don't send it to the rest of the state just because of, uh, you know, time and tank for right now with the V twin B and the other, uh, you know lager on the mix got it and then you mentioned that canning is going to be in your future that one, that's with a an expansion to bigger to more and bigger fermenters well yeah yeah we're adding a, a couple of 150s and two more 30s that are going to be going online next month so uh after that we're going to have a little bit more flexibility so and tankage to play with can some other beers kolsch is a good beer to put in a can oh my God. you guys will do well with that so, so is vino lager by the way oh, yeah. that, that's perfect so I, i'm assuming you probably found the percent uh, I, of the of the crystal 65 i want to add to that question and just ask why that particular malt or, you know are there other options or, or is that the traditional option why did you pick that one well, you know, it's funny because I did have um, 60L in there, which was a domestic, 
Uh, but this one is um, uh, European, it's an English malt, and it seemed to give it um, a, a little bit more of a, um, I guess, a, a grainy malt character that I was looking for in this beer. Um, the 60L that I was using was so clean that it really didn't mm -hmm. add much to it other than color, in my opinion. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, it's three and a half percent on the 65 and I've got some Vienna 20 L in there too. And that's like, uh, almost 13%. Yeah, okay. Th those British crystals do have, they add that kind of grainy, deeper caramel flavor, more complex flavors in that regard. Yes. Almost like, uh, not even caramel, but more like raisiny, but in a good way. I see. Yeah, and you with I mean? a small amount, you can really, you know, dial it in and it's not too overwhelming. Yeah. So that's a good percentage of 20L. Uh, what, what's your purpose in, in putting that in there for body? Uh, definitely a um, little bit of uh, uh, body and, um, uh, you know, I, I, again, uh, flavor uh, coming from that uh, sure. 20L. I think it's, yeah. uh, it's a nice flavor component. Well, you know, this beer really tastes great. I love the flavor. Yeah. 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 And most of the flavor is all up front. Yeah. Yes, nice. Good good mouthfeel, good body, and then it just finishes out really clean. Yeah, it doesn't wear in the palate at all. No, not at all. And it just, yeah, you could sell a lot of this just because just it's refreshing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's, just, it's just, it doesn't kill the palate at the end. It's really nice. Now, you guys are going to have to forgive me for a second. Um, this is not a show where we'll just talk about how great everything is all the time. <laughs> if I, it, The beer is great, so you'll see where I'm getting at in a second. Doc over here, who was just talking about how how nice this beer is and how much he thinks you're probably selling, if I remember right, uh, actually hates Munich malt. I, I hate it. It's just, <laughs> it's almost all, it's just the yeah, malt. You don't like that, Munich malt. I don't like so Munich malt. Did you? Generally. You obviously must have picked it up right oh, yeah. away when you. Yeah, yeah. but you like Vienna lagers. Um, uh, I do when they're like really clean at the end. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's 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 really hard to do, and uh, if you can get all the like the malt flavor and everything up front. Yeah. And then it just it just cleans itself at the end. You just swallow and you go, no. Oh, it's not too bitter at the end. It's not too cloying. It's just... Which is what I find in this beer. Yeah, it's But really my nice. palate's different than yours. Are, are, is this... Well, I can smell it in... You can smell it <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, I could drink a lot of this. One. Oh, you could. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I yeah. Really, actually, I really like this. And that's one. what I was getting at. So they were able to get it to finish in such it, a way. It's so that... clean at the end. Okay. It's so nice. Okay. Yeah. What's the fermentation schedule on this? Um, well, let's see. Um, it's uh, total time in the tank is going to be about four weeks. Um, it um, the the yeast that we're using, um, which is out of Y yeast twenty one twenty four, um, we. Uh, the primary is done pretty quickly. I mean, this yeast is, um, uh, it, it's, it's really the workhorse in the industry. Uh, I think it's the most utilized yeast, uh, in the world as far as I know. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a yeast that I've used for so long. I'm so comfortable with it, but, um, yeah, primary is usually done, um, at about, uh, you know, day eight, there's really nothing left. Um, but, um, you know, really, uh, some aging, um, then, you know, I, start uh, stepping down the tank about um, five degrees uh, per day when it uh, gets to a point. Uh, and we try to pull the yeast out uh, no earlier than uh, day 18 for uh, uh, next generation. Okay. So when it gets to a point, what point is that that you raise it five degrees? Um, well, it's usually um, I'm going to start stepping down. Um, it, you know, it, it can depend on fermentation profile. These, these can change. Uh, they're not real specific, but I would say that um, somewhere around uh, day uh, 14, 15, you... um, I'll start stepping it down nice. uh, five degrees. Sure. And um, yeah, and then by day 21, I normally have it at the temperature that I want it. And um, then we're probably uh, looking at another week. Yeah, we'll look a little longer. Yeah. And then and some of them can't go a little longer. And it clears there on its own, or do you use any finding agents to clear it up? Um, no, this one, we don't use any fining agents. Mm -hmm. Again, um, you know, I find the yeast um, flocks out pretty well. Right. Um, we don't have a whole lot of issue with it. Um, it, um, you know, when we pull the yeast uh, to use it in a different tank, um, it, it, it's pretty amazing. It, it, it looks, um, you know, fairly bright. It, it's um, it's which, really bright. Know, it's it's so clear and, and it's just kind of brilliant. Yeah. 
So you, you start warmer and then you drop it. That's what you're saying, right? Um, I sure do. Um, I don't think I said that, but that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. JP can uh, is reading between the yeah. lines. So, what, do you got temps for us? Yeah. yeah. What do you start at? It's a point of contention yeah, in the yeah. studio, um, so I need so to make sure. Day one. Uh, day one. Um, in 24 hours, first 24 hours, um, I'll let it um, hit uh, 65. And then as uh, fermentation ramps up, and with, it's within 24, sometimes actually less um, with this yeast, especially with uh, multiple generations, um, I'll turn it down uh, to 55 um, uh, with, a, I guess, a five degree uh, over, a, a, let's say, eight hour period. So I'll go down to 60 and then 55. And now I got that's it. usually within 24 hours. Within 24 hours, I see. Why is that? Well, and that's now that's that... real good the yeast jump jump started. So it's almost like a warm pitching argument, right? So yeast right. propagation step was a... But yes. Now, and of course, this is an age-old debate here, not just on the Brewing <laughs> Network, but warm, probably start. everywhere. But uh, well, yeah. But I'm just hearing Jamil's voice in my head, and one of the <laughs> one of the things uh, one of our co-hosts Jamil has always said to me was, uh, or said to everybody. The the replication phase, that first 24 hours, is the most important phase when it comes to uh, ester production Mm -hmm. and and all of these different flavors that you can really get out of the yeast. And so he was always – and by the way, guys, I'm just regurgitating information. I'm not advocating. He was always – you know, adamant that if you if you want that nice clean lager, the the first 24 hours is the most important. Right. But now – they just also said that all of those temper, temperature changes happen within 24 hours. Not like he does 24 hours at 65 and then starts to crank it down. So I'm, I guess yeah. I'm just really curious about your experience there. Well, you know, like I said, I've, I've used this yeast, um, gosh, for quite some time now. I think, but probably about 20 years, and I'm just very comfortable with how it. It works. I see. And, you know, I'm not speaking for other lager yeast for sure because, you know, there's going to be some, some difference. But no, the uh, Bohemian this rocks. One, it's I'm a great very, yeast. I'm very confident. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. The Bohemian you're talking about, right? That's what you're using? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Czech, Bohemian, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, it's um, – this one, I think, uh, you know, never gives me any, you know, strong ester – um, uh, profiles, uh, even with the, um, uh, you know, other, other beers that we, uh, use this on, um, it, it can give a slight pear character, but it's not, it's certainly not what I would consider st- strong or too strong for a lager. It doesn't dominate the, the flavor profile. Well, that's great. If you're not no getting way. that ester, if you're not getting the ester production, I think well, I wouldn't change the thing. That's great. Well, sure. And kick, like you say, you're, you're sort of kickstarting the yeast, no, getting it going, no, no, no. and then knocking it right down to where you, the temperature no. you want to be at. Yeah. yeah. I Absolutely. just had the beer. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty approved. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, the results in the, you know, right there. Okay. Well, we've got some more beer in front of us, but i got to get us to a break. Mm-hmm. Um, when we come back, if you guys are okay with it, I want to talk about your um, – your, your midnight espresso, the coffee porter. Can we do that? Yeah. I All want right. to say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Actually, no. Uh, yeah, we're not moving on to something else. <laughs> uh, all right. That, uh, I'm just – oh, you're drinking it too? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, okay. Perfect. P- perfect. Then we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk about that. Uh, in the meantime, you know, speaking of yeast, uh, if you uh, are a professional brewer who's planning to submit your beers to the GABF beer competition, well – uh, as you're preparing your next medal-winning recipe, send some of your finished beers to White Labs for their next big QC day. Uh, this program was started in 2007 as a way for professional brewers to have multiple analytical tests conducted at once, while also offering you some big savings. So all you need to do is purchase a big QC day kit and get your samples submitted before August 28th. 
Coming up, uh, White Labs will test your beers for IBUs, alcohol content, calories, attenuation, gluten content, and more. Plus, by participating in Big QC Day, you'll be able to see uh, more how your beers perform compared to the entire pool of participants. So uh, to learn more about this great cost-saving program, visit whitelabs.com slash Day. whitelabs.com slash Day, And don't worry about what's happening with your beer. Test it over at White Labs. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, more from Motorworks Brewing. We're going to taste their Midnight Espresso Coffee Porter, which is a really good beer. I've tasted it already. Oh, man. Plus, you're ahead of the game. you're going to learn about how they roast their coffee in-house. Hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Brewcasters. The Brewcasters on The Brewing Network. Grog tags aren't just for labeling your home brews to hand out to your friends. They're the perfect way to round out your personal brewing marketing. Bringing your latest beer to a funeral? Craft a metal sign to go with it. Heading out to Little Liam's Bar Mitzvah? Grog Tag custom bottle caps are awesome. Couldn't get out of jury duty this year? Grog Tag the hell out of the deliberation room with reusable labels. Grog Tag has an awesome array of products just waiting to be customized by you. Metal signs, coasters, tasting mats, bottle caps, tap handles. It's all there waiting for your designs at Grog Tag. Liven up your next party with the widest selection of custom products ever offered by a sponsor of the Brewing Network. Grog Tag. At least your beer will look good. Your support of the Brewing Network means everything to us. We couldn't produce shows without you. And we love giving you something extra for that support. Like... Brew Your Own Magazine. You already know it's a great brewing magazine full of recipes, equipment how-tos, discussions of beer styles, and brewing techniques. Whether you're new to brewing and just starting out or you're an old pro, you'll always learn something from the articles in Brew Your Own. Plus, there are amazing special issues like plans for building a Brutus 10 system, 250 classic clone recipes, and the Home Brewer's Answer Book. Brew Your Own Magazine and BYO.com are awesome resources for any any brewer, whether for yourself or as a gift, when you subscribe or resubscribe from the Brewing Network homepage, you directly support programs like this. Get a great magazine and support the Brewing Network. Subscribe to Brew Your Own right from the BrewingNetwork.com. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, and Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit FiveStarChemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five star treatment today are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises blickman engineering has the answer the blickman brew easy all grain brewing system the brew easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design perfect for any size brewing location at its core the brew easy is built on two gorgeous blickman boilermaker brew kettles a high temperature march pump and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater the brew easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your Brew Easy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The Brew Easy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your Brew Easy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new Brew Easy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new Brew Easy. 
If you work in retail sales, the restaurant industry, or are a new craft beer enthusiast, or you know someone who is, you have got to check out Beer 101. Beer 101 is an online course created for anyone wanting a quick introduction to the vast world of craft beer. Beer 101 covers the history of beer, brewing ingredients and processes, vital stats like ABV, SRM, IBU and gravity, styles, tasting, glassware, and pairing beer with food. The Beer 101 course is offered by the Brewers Association at craftbeer.com, also home to the truly awesome Beer Style Finder, a visual guide to every beer style. Quickly play with color, bitterness, and alcohol content to interactively explore the entire world of beer styles with a gorgeously designed interface to your favorite beverage. The new Beer 101 course and new Beer Style Finder are only available at craftbeer.com. Craftbeer.com, celebrating the best of American beer. Hi, this is Tyler from Libertine Brewing Company in the central coast of California. You're listening to Brewing Network, The Session. It sucks. Does it suck? It sucks. But that's what's good about it, is that it sucks, right? Yeah, welcome back. We are hanging out with Motorworks Brewing out of Florida. And also... I want to remind you about our good friends over at Neshaminy Creek Brewing. Neshaminy Creek Brewing's been on the Philly beer map since 2012. Just recently took their fourth Philly Beer Scene Magazine Award for Brewer of the Year 2014, 15, 16, and 17. And third for Brewery of the Year. Two-time GABF, get this, we were just talking about it, Vienna-style lager medal winner in 2013 and 2016. Sounds like Motorworks got in there, a little in between. Uh, (laughs) Also a bronze for their smoke lager in 2016. So they've got a large, expanded, and recently renovated tap room with 24 beers on tap, 18 of which are rotating seasonal limited beers, um, and a variety of beer styles from hoppy double IPAs to sessionable and poundable lagers to oak fermented saisons and sour beers. Free brewery tours on Saturdays, plus... If you'll take my word for it, they're really cool guys over there. I enjoy yeah. having them on the show quite a lot. Um, they're making some good Johns over there. They're good. Yeah, that's right. Check them out at NeshaminyCreekBrewing.com. <laughs> Dot John. Yeah. All right. We've got Motorworks uh, Brewing on the line with us still, and uh, we're having a good time drinking their beer and talking to Bob and Barry. Thanks for being with us, guys. I appreciate it very much. Good to be here. All right. Now, Bevo, our lovely Bevo, is working on getting us more beer in the glass. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna maybe have to rearrange the order a little bit. But um, I want to talk about the Midnight Espresso Coffee Porter, and that's what's in our glass now. Um, can you tell us about this beer? And then, obviously, I want to know about these coffee beans. So, <laughs> sure. Um, well, you know the. It, it, started out as a just a standard porter that we were doing um but um i'm i've been into coffee and roasting coffee beans at home for about 10 years now so it just kind of made sense to me uh, when we were um, kicking around the idea it was actually my wife uh wanted a coffee porter uh, so i figured hey why not let's try it out see how it works and um yeah even in the first batch uh we were roasting our own beans uh, but of course, the scale of you know roasting <laughs> beans man. for you know a, yeah a beer and a brewery is so different from doing it at home that uh, I had to I, I basically had to go back to uh, uh, learning volume on uh, on roasting uh, coffee beans. I see. Uh, but um, yeah, so I enjoy it. You Love you it. you must have had to buy a professional coffee roaster of a because the home coffee roaster I've seen them. It's like a little blender basically <laughs> yeah it's not gonna make much it's like a pound um, yeah so the one that i have uh can roast up to six pounds at a time um and can do multiple batches back to back um it's uh artisan 6m um i think it's out of uh seattle area uh, okay. where they are manufactured got it got it 
Now, you say you've been doing this at home for, for so long, which I, I've always wanted to do the home coffee roasting thing because yeah. it looks fun. It's fun. I like it. But I, it's kind of like brewing for me now. Mm-hmm. I know that my roasting is not going to be as good as the professional coffee that I can buy. <laughs> right. So I feel like it's just going to waste money. But you've been doing this for a long time, so you've had to learn all of these techniques about the, the length of time and, and where the bean comes from. And maybe you can even throw in a couple things I, I'm not mentioning, I don't know about. Well, you know, these days um, we get a lot of um, uh, region-specific beans uh, that are, um, you know, that you can buy as either, you know, roasted or as green beans that you can roast yourself. And if you get your hands on, you know, the type of beans that you enjoy uh, as a coffee drinker, uh, then you can certainly manipulate the flavors uh, with the uh, different roasting times and how dark you roast it or light you roast it. That's um, cool. Even the type of roaster can create different flavors. Okay. For sure. Like, I have a little one at home. I do five ounces at a time. You do. Okay. And it's you can't adjust the temperature. It's just kind of oh. on, and then it's off. But right. you would do the length of time then? But you can, yes, you can You can mess with the length of time. Okay. So, on you know, then depending on the beans, if they're, like, generally from, you know, uh, Central America or whatever, they're kind of medium, you know, so maybe 22 minutes. It, de- it also depends on the temperature of the garage and all this kind of stuff like that. But if they're darker, like African beans or like like Sumatra, which I know is in this blend, um, those can go a little darker, like 24 or so, 25 minutes on my machine. Okay. And it just, you know, it, 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 makes it, it makes a difference for sure. But if you want to, you know, really dial in the flavors like they're talking about, you need something that you can manipulate the temperature on. Okay. You can get little time right. scales and stuff. Got it. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I like your initiative. I like how you took this. This, you know, it's like brewing too, right? You took this hobby of yours and you thought, hey, if we're going to make a coffee porter, fuck this, I'm doing it myself. Um, rather than, <laughs> you know, rather than going to the local to the local roastery, right? So, um, how yeah. many how many pounds of beans did you waste before you figured out that new machine? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Or give oh. away, I should say. <laughs> You well, know, the brewery drinks a pound a day, so that helps you get some waste. waste. No waste, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the all the brewers, um, everybody in the back of the house now, they're are confirmed uh, coffee addicts. So. <laughs> but um, you know, so we do go through a lot of personal stuff. Uh, but you know, I actually had a, a buddy that uh, almost went into business uh, uh, roasting coffee, and he showed me on his system, which did actually ten pounds at a time. Okay, uh, which he wow. built himself, and uh, so I kind of learned, you know, scale that way uh, from him. And he lo- lo- luckily he was blocks from the brewery, so it was really easy to learn. Perfect. And um, yeah, so all right, I, so. I, I, I got- so in this beer that we're drinking, the Midnight Espresso, how many pounds of coffee, and in what form do you put the coffee in, and and what stage too? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. So um, when we first started, we were um, we were always doing it cold um, after temperature after yeast drop and temperatures down to about thirty one in the tank, and uh, we were throwing the uh, beans in um, to the fermenter. Uh, in a um, in a bag and uh, letting them uh, soak that way. Oh, um, but we, yeah, we found uh, no that we did grind them even oh. from the beginning. Oh. Okay. Um, and what we found was um, that we were just we were using up so much. We we're using I think in the beginning something like forty five pounds of coffee in a thirty barrel batch, um, and it was just you know so much coffee to deal yeah, with yeah that's amazing. so um actually um um uh, my uh head there my uh assistant brewer uh jose came up with an idea of um uh, putting it in a uh, bag trap filter and um just circulating it through the filter uh the beer that is uh full of ground coffee beans and we went down to eleven and a half pounds wow. in a thirty barrel batch. That's with, with, same extraction. Yeah, the just, same thing. So just by getting better extraction, I give credit that on a less cost. Yeah, that's amazing. So, meaning, okay, just trying to get a full picture. So, it's in the fermenter still. It's cold. You're basically you're taking it out of the fermenter through this um, Randall of sorts and back into the fermenter. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. It takes about um, anywhere from about an hour and a half to two hours uh, circulation time, and the extraction's done. Got it. <laughs> what a difference from uh, almost a whole 50-pound sack <laughs> of beans to, yeah, to 11 pounds. A quarter of yeah. that was what such you a, were putting in there. It made me happy. I do our costing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're like, okay, Jose, uh, good job. Uh, we're not giving you a raise just yet, but good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping the cost down. Um, okay, and so now, and and within that, uh, within that filter, that this bag that you have, that you're running it through, they're fully ground beans that that you roasted there. Right. Right. Yep. Super coarse, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Like for a French press, or more coarse than them? A sack of potatoes well, and a ham. Yeah, I mean. I'm- so I've got a, uh, uh, a pretty nice grinder, and I set it, you know, to the uh, uh, to the most coarse setting. I actually had a guy come in and uh, reset it for me, so it would do it even coarse, more coarse than it was, um, because we got some lo- uh, local roasters. And um, guy came in and said, "Hey, I can I can make this even, you know, more coarse." And I was like, "Go for it." So that's what I've been doing ever since. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Kind of hard to describe coarse, but when I look at a grain, I look at uh, the number of bits. I, I consider like a, a grain that has 20 bits kind of a coarse thing. Is there any way yet we could you could describe the coarseness of it uh, just in, in some sort of like a, well, uh, a granular? Well, I, I guess I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that term that you're using. Uh, uh, bits of grain. But um, I would say um, that, you know, it, um, gosh, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, it's certainly the, the most coarse. It, it's more coarse than I would normally put in a uh, French press. For okay. Sure. okay. Yeah, kind of between a French press and a percolator um, level of. Yeah, I would say, yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah, oh, percolator. Oh, oh, fine. It's, a, it's and, a, one of the coffee so roasts. I thought it was something like well, that. Well, and, and that's pretty descriptive, but since they're from Florida, let me, let me put it into their language. So <laughs> when you buy an eight ball, uh, <laughs> is it before you may turn it in? <laughs> Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just, you know, just Florida language. That's all. all right. So it's not like if it's a homebrew, you'd have to hit him with a hammer to get into these big chunks. <laughs> right. You put it through some grinder. Yeah. Some sort of yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a nice grinder that, that we bought. Nice. Well, you've done well with the beer. I, you know, usually on a coffee beer, I, I really enjoy the aroma. Um, if, if you get that right. And then from there, it can be kind of astringent or it can go into different directions. Sometimes I really enjoy and sometimes I don't. They're hard uh, to do, man. They're hard animals to make. I think so. Like a lot of times you can get that um, that green pepper flavor, mm-hmm. yep. uh, which is, I think that even has a name, that off flavor. Um, Nate would know it. Nate knows it, of course. Nate probably has a tattoo of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this one, not the, the aroma is just awesome. It's what you'd expect it to be, just a really uh, nice. Uh, coffee aroma and the flavor really matches it you know sometimes aroma and flavor actually don't uh, match and this one matches quite a bit a little chocolate comes through which i like on this definitely got the roast character Um, and some caramel characters and some yeah exactly and in fact that sort of matches the 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 appearance as well um there's just a little bit it's not a um uh, it's not a clear beer at all right um and it actually kind of all matches between from the aroma to the flavor to to the appearance uh, I really like this coffee beer. I could I could have it for breakfast. I do too, and I, I think the recipe. And I'm interested to, to ask the guys if they crafted which which did they which. Well, here I'll just ask you instead of telling you guys that I'm going to ask you a question. Um, which <laughs> did you craft first, the beer recipe or the the blend that you put into the beer? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I was already making those coffee beans years ago, okay. um, the way that I'm making them now, I had gotten very comfortable, uh, with, uh, Sumatra and Sulawesi beans and how they worked. So I think I had kind of an advantage because it was like, these beans will work perfect in a Porter. And, um, it just kind of came together like that. Um, our, our Porter was good, but you know, with the coffee, I think it really, um, uh, you know, was at a different level and it worked well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you design the beer around the flavors you would get from the coffee, or you kind of already knew how that would look? I think a little bit, certainly. I mean, you know, uh, chocolate malt, um, caramel 120. Um, Mm -hmm. We uh, definitely had some lactose uh, in there, which, Mm. you know, nobody's lactose intolerant. uh, It's in there. (laughs) uh, We don't care about that. It's fine. 
It's all right. A little bit's fine. <laughs> I, th- I think you almost have to, to with a coffee beer like this, or really any adjunct beer like this, You, I think you have to design the recipe of the beer around the thing that you're putting in. And I think why this beer works well is because you drink it and you taste coffee, and then it kind of seamlessly goes into beer. Yeah. Um, and, like, the lactose is a great touch. Um, I didn't necessarily know it was in there, but maybe now that I now that you say it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can I can maybe pick up on a little bit of that. Um, but it's just this seamless transition where a lot of coffee beers aren't. There's a very there's a drop off. There's a hard like, edge. There's yeah. coffee, and then and then here's the beer, and you can kind of like pick apart. But this is it's it's it's, well, it's very well done that way. Thanks. I mean, the the Sulawesi beans are uh, roasted um, uh, lighter. And they tend to give more of a fruity character to the beer, and you can you can really mm-hmm. taste it. And I, I kind of preach that to a lot of people that try the beer. I'm like, listen, you know, some of those fruit flavors that you're getting are actually coffee flavors, well, which yeah. not a lot of people uh, associate with coffee very often. Some of those African beans can can do those light blueberry. A Kenyan coffee for me oh. get, just kicks off tons of blueberry when it's roasted real light like that. And yeah, and if you get some, um, you know. Uh, like uh, unwashed beans, um, you can get more of that character. And mm-hmm. some of those, like you say, blueberry. Um, we actually had a, a blueberry saison uh, for uh, coffee, blueberry coffee saison for a while, and there were no blueberries uh, in the beer. <laughs> it was all coffee. Wow, yeah, that that's was dope, dude. dude. That was one we did with a, a local roaster, though. So that was actually yep. a cool collaboration with some of our friends. Uh, one of the local roasters by the Buddy Brew, and uh, those guys kill it. And uh, you know that that was a really fun beer, and it was, it, it was it's really cool to just tell people like, hey, this is a blueberry coffee saison. There's no blueberries in it, by the way. And they're like, what the hell? I love that. <laughs> that is amazing. Is there a um, now? I know there's a shelf life for everything, but uh, with great IPAs that you're getting all these wonderful aromas from, like you do with a coffee beer, um, you know they drop out pretty quickly. You know we try to serve them here at the Hop Grenade pretty fast, and and our home brews. What about what's the shelf life of of that strong coffee aroma that we're getting out of this beer, and and flavor you for know, that matter? Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's definitely our our uh, most shelf stable beer. Okay. We, we give it nine months. Um, I've I've had them at a year, and um, you notice that the uh, at a year you can tell the malt is not quite the same, um, but the flavors uh, still stand up pretty well. So I've been very happy with the stability of this one. Got it. Okay. All right. I got to keep us moving because we've got our beers nine months on the shelf with this one. Though. You, I'm sorry. Say again that you would. No, I said I've ne- actually never seen this beer anywhere near that close to oh, it off see. the shelf thing, though. But Bob's like, I'm good with nine months. I was like, yeah, if it ever gets there, cool. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually, that's great. If the shelf life is well longer than the popularity of the beer, you guys are happy as ever. Okay. You don't have to send yeah. reps out to remove beer from the shelf. So. <laughs> so this was canned in June, late June. Late June, okay. So, yeah, it's going strong. God, it's good. It's yeah, great. That's I a like great beer, beer, man. Wow. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> All right, just in the for the sake of time, because I want to get through a couple more beers. Um, yes. So now, JP, I, I misinformed you okay. at the beginning of the show. Okay. Uh, our next beer is an IPA called uh, Pulp Friction. Okay. And I made the mistake of, and now this is why marketing professionals should just pay attention. Okay. I made the mistake then of assuming it was a New England style IPA. Okay. Because of the pulp. Ah, it also right. in the description. I think the description was like a like a pineapple IPA. I, I might be wrong. I'm just trying to remember. Um, anyhow, mm-hmm. I was wrong. Okay, it is clearly it's in your glass now. This is, it is clearly in your glass now. <laughs> uh, this not is a New England IPA. One of the moments where I'm I'm glad that you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you being wrong. <laughs> and I can accept that. Oh, thank you. And, and it's funny too because um, I'll forgive that it's an IPA. <laughs> right. Well, uh, Bob and Barry uh, had messaged me on Skype too. Uh, they must have been listening to the beginning. They're, you know, I said, "Hey, we got time for a couple beers," and they're like, "By the way, the Pulp Friction is not a New England IPA." <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't had it in my glass yet. So, uh, all so right, you guys. I'll tell you what it is. It's one of the most aromatic IPAs yes. I ever put near my nose. Tasty. I'm so glad you said that yeah. because I'm usually the one making those like broad statements. No. But I, I, it's amazing. Uh, during the when we were just still talking about the coffee beer. I took a, a whiff of this beer, and the aroma is just incredible. It's amazing. The tasting I had that looked at each other. That, 
holy fuck moment. I'm so <laughs> glad you guys are wow. saying that because I didn't want to be the. Oh no. Okay. All right, Same Bob, time let's get right, each other go, let's get, wow. Let's get right, right to it. How you do that? Yeah, Come guys, on. this aroma is just incredible. Well, it, I mean, it, it obviously went through a lot of stages to get to that point. Um, you know, we were on the small system and we were using, um, you know, uh, grapefruit uh, peel uh, in the small system. And it was easy enough to handle that way. Uh, but when we got into the big system, I knew there was no way with the amount of peel that we were using uh, proportionally that I was going to be able to get that beer out of that tank without clogging up the heat exchanger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like <laughs> nightmarish thoughts of, you know, pulling out um, bits and chunks of, um, you know, uh, grapefruit out of my heat exchanger. So um, I there's actually a local guy, um, a chemist um, down the street who um, said he uh, had some experience in, in uh, the beer industry, and he, and he does. Um, he said that he could uh, come up with a flavor for me. So we started tasting uh, different grapefruit flavors, and none of them tasted right. And I kept telling him, I'm like, look, this doesn't taste like grapefruit. It tastes like something close to it, but it's not even – it's not it's not getting there. And one day he came in and said, try this, and we put it in a beer and tasted it. And I'm like, that's exactly what grapefruit tastes like. What, what the hell is this? And he says – the easiest thing in the world, it's oil. It's <laughs> literally grapefruit oil. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I'm like, you're kidding me. <laughs> that's the chemical. So that's uh, what happened. Though. Yeah. So, okay, so just like we would use hop oils or we would use any kind of other oil, which, which are this right. extremely concentrated uh, version of the things we're looking for, um, that's what you did to get that strong aroma in yeah. this beer. Yeah. And where yeah, do we introduce it? On the hot side absolutely. or the cool side? Uh, that's going cold side. Cold side, uh, so, very cold. And uh, the oil seems to work okay, and you know, with the with the with the uh, the beer. I mean, like, isn't that like a? I've still got mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, right? No problem. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, it's actually. It's so we have we have separate lines, uh, separate oh. gaskets. Oh. Um, yeah, it's um, a process because it's an oil, <laughs> and you know certain uh, beer transfer lines don't work well with oil. So we had okay. we're, we're actually ordering uh, different lines even for for that. But um, yeah, no, it's it's an oil. It still floats. Um, we can't at this point, um, you know, transfer the last bit of beer out uh, because there's going to be some oil uh, too, involved. Too much oil. So. Uh, it's still, you know, uh, a process, and I'm sure at some point we'll figure it out. Um, you know, we're <laughs> we're dosing this beer at about 31 degrees. Um, yeah, it's 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 hard to make happen. And you're just dosing and uh, dosing and tasting, just dose and taste, uh, dose and taste, or what? Well, that's what we did in the beginning. Of course, Sounds we've like got a good process now, um, but you know, just small amounts at a time um, uh, in the tank while we're uh, recirculating it. Okay. Man, it's also because obviously there is the in the aroma is the the fruit characteristic. Oh, absolutely! But it it also is so much like hops that I ex- I didn't expect that answer. I didn't well, expect a, a a fruit oil. I expected well, some sort of hop. Are there are there a sort of a citrusy or, or fruity hops involved too? Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Citra, citra, citra is the okay. uh, main. Uh, dry hop that so, you're 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 getting there. So the oil rises on top of that. Okay, gotcha. Wow, Speaking literally. to the uh, the fruity notes of it, and I know a couple of you guys are most of you are uh, BJCP and all that and uh, involved in this. So uh, me and Bob, you know, typically pick what we're going to send to competitions, and every now and then, as you heard earlier, I'd like to just do some random shit. Um, so this one for our uh, Florida uh, competition, which is all the breweries in Florida sending in beer for it. Uh, I told Bob I was entering this as a fruit beer, which IPA is typically that hot bitterness level of it is completely out of bounds for the style. Right. He thought I was crazy. I said, let's see what happens. And uh, it took gold for that. And uh, that was pretty damn cool. That is super I, cool. And I I'm call not, this a fruit forward beer. I, I get that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm not surprised yeah. by that reaction. I'm surprised that that was what I'm tasting, but I'm not surprised by that reaction. Um, 
yeah, I think this, grapefruit comes through strong, and it's kind. Of, I mean, I've been replacing mimosas in my diet with, uh, you know, a grapefruit IPA. This, this pulp friction's killing it. You're calling everything in my brain right now, uh, Barry, because <laughs> I was I was thinking the same thing that this is a great beer mosa beer, yeah. or forget it, just on its own in the morning, it's a it's it's a better mimosa, uh, right? Right. Because it does have characteristics, I think, of orange juice in the flavor. Obviously, grapefruit juice. That's that's a no brainer, but um, it's not just bitter, which is, I think, impressive. I'm curious about this oil, because a lot of times when I have grapefruit beers, um, grapefruit sculpin, like you name it, mm-hmm. um, there is, so so hops are bitter, grapefruit's bitter. To me, it's a recipe for bitter disaster, which is something that my palate just doesn't enjoy. This beer is not bitter, I wouldn't call it. To me, this is the ideal yeah. blending beer. I can take a lot of boring pale ales, yeah. or a, a boring uh, uh Bo Pills or something. Add a portion of this kind of beer to it. Right. Just make it pop. Right. How do you? How did you guys avoid the bitterness that could have happened there? Well, you know, I don't know that I can. I can be honest and answer that one. Um, I mean, it, our it's our IPA, and uh, we just yeah. take our IPA and and you know use the um, grapefruit oil uh, to uh, to dose into our IPA. Our IPA is usually. Probably somewhere around 70 IBU, so there's certainly plenty of yeah. um, bitterness in there. There it's is. Just finding that balance too. So you know that's the key thing. I know we're not. Uh, you know we didn't send the uh, uh, you know the IPA uh, to talk about tonight because this one's a little bit more fun to talk about for this. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, sure. you know the balance is key, as you guys have kind of noted on pretty much all the beers across the board so far. You know, one of the best things that Bob does is you know kind of aim for balance across the board and just not going so punch you in the face with everything a lot of guys are just going like how big can i make something and we're like you know how drinkable can we make something how much can we enjoy this like right. screw doing it just to do it let's do what we want to drink yeah good call and and yeah, you're right this one punch you in the face at all yeah <laughs> But the grapefruit, but the balance is still there off the base beer. It is still there, and you're certainly right that there is bitterness. I didn't, and, and there's even bitterness just from the grapefruit. But it's just, I'm surprised at so much grapefruit flavor without um, yeah. an enormous amount of bitterness. So yeah, it, it, yeah the, the balance yeah. is there. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Not to be critical, but I, it, personally, I would uh, get a little bit more of like crystal character at the end, a little bit more sweetness. I think I might like it better. Okay. That's why I probably thought about blending instead. I see. Right. Something a little more malty. Gotcha. I think we'll just make it hazy and sell a shitload more. There you go. <laughs> well, sell twice as much. <laughs> yeah. If you, first of all, you, please don't. You don't have to. But <laughs> at the same time, you know what? If it helps the brewery, because you absolutely will sell more. Don't blame me if for you, making money. If you do that, then I'm not, yeah, not going to blame you. No. Um, okay, we got one more beer to get through that I want to make sure that we do here. And um, this is called the Peril Aged, uh, with a P, Peril Aged. Um, it is a Chattanooga Whiskey Barrel Aged Imperial Porter. All right. Um, so we're going to taste this, guys. Why don't you tell us about the beer as we do some sipping? All right. Well, um, obviously, Imperial Porter. Um, you know, it's kind of... Uh, tired of all the uh, imperial stouts in uh, barrels so um, you know I, I kind of shifted focus a little bit more um, on this one for a uh, more chocolatey uh, notes uh, coming through um, fair amount of uh, uh, caramel and of course um, Chattanooga whiskey barrels which uh, come through very strong in this beer. Just a little bit of oak is <laughs> I'm sorry. If this is, I'm sorry if this is a dumb question, but is Chattanooga the brand or just the place? Yes. It is the brand. Okay. Choo choo. It's, it's a brand. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's also the place. I don't know. If it, I don't know if they're in Chattanooga. I imagine. Oh. I know it is a place. <laughs> yes. A, a place that exists. It's also yeah. a song. <laughs> um, okay. And so you made, and this is not the the porter that is the base for the. Um, Midnight Espresso. This is an Imperial Porter first? Uh, absolutely. Okay. It, it is a different recipe. Got it. So Imperial Porter and then put into the Chattanooga Whiskey Barrels. How long is this, has this been aged in there? Uh, six months. Six months. Okay. Long time. What size are the barrels? Uh, 53. So uh, typical whiskey okay. size, mm-hmm. I think, 53. All right. And what's the ABV on this beer? Uh, this one, um, we've got it listed on here. Um, should be around eight and a half. Okay. Oh, wow. 
Now it tastes. This is one of those ones that the aroma the is stronger yeah. than the than the flavor. So it it tastes like a or, sorry. It it smells like a higher ABV than that. Or it smells like a wood plank. Like you're gonna get a ton of uh, oak in there and everything else, but it doesn't. But then you don't. It, you don't. It doesn't kill the palate. And it's not. And it tastes about eight. 8%, something eight like three. that, too. Yeah. You, doc, doc, doc goes 8.3. Uh, yeah. Um, it smells strong. It smells 10. And then I think you're right about the oak, but it doesn't, but the but the flavor doesn't have that. That's always a weird thing to me, how the uh, aroma can have so much uh, stronger and even um, jagged edges that stick out when the, when the flavor doesn't. Yeah, it, it, I think your mind kind of takes you there. Yeah. With, the, with that smell. Yeah. And yeah, this. And then it tricks you when you taste it. Yeah. Well, like mouthfeel isn't aromatic. Yeah, but you're okay. expecting something. You know cool. I mean? You're expecting right. the next thing. Right. And uh, this one, it, great once, smell. Once again, it. it melds together yeah. in the. I smell like pluots or plums. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like okay. like a kind of underripe plum. And, and, I, and I'm not saying it in a bad way. It's definitely not a bad thing. But it is definitely very confusing to my brain. Well, I've been going through a lot of pluots in my kitchen lately, <laughs> actually. Okay. And smell it. Tell me if it doesn't smell oh, like it a... Does. It does. Yeah, totally... and I don't know why that is. I would imagine it's it's the the, the whiskey playing with the malt. Yeah, there's some stone fruits. It's, it's yeah. always an ester thing. Which yeah. you t- any sort of, you taste anything in a beer... It's Definitely. fruit. It's an ester. Okay. And that's probably like probably something to do with the malt combination that gives that sort of that's what the I just age said, yeah. in the barrel together. Right. Or the, the, the malt of the whiskey. I did, it could I just, have nothing to do with the oh, beer at all. Itself. I just Here got all whiskey. barrel out of this thing. Really? And I don't get I don't get much barrel at just, all. Oh, and it just made me just oh, I, I can't wait to drink it. So I don't get much of that. Bob, what do you think about these comments we're we're making? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I I think the chocolate um has a lot to do with um softening those edges that you're talking about you're getting in in the aroma uh so the chocolate malt that we're using um is you know love that malt uh, i think that it does help with uh with some of that um also for me i, and I think what you get with a lot of barrel aged beers are comments that um are, are very different from person to person yeah. i i tend to get a coconut flavor out of a lot of barrel aged beers and it's some kind of combination of, you know, the toasted oak and, um, you know, that, that oak flavor coming through in a, a manner that for some reason I equate to coconut. Um, I thought I was crazy for a while, but <laughs> I've heard other people say it recently. And it's like, okay, so I'm not, I'm not going nuts. Right. Um, well, it, it, yeah, you might have found just one or two well, other people. They're not you might really exclusive. Be nuts. <laughs> one less crazy. <laughs> They're all nuts. <laughs> hmm. Now, I always get that. This is the only beer that we've had uh, tonight that didn't come in a can. This one came in a bottle. Um, why is that? Is it just a larger format that you guys were wanting to do? Uh, no, this was um, – so our cans are actually made for actual distribution, so those go out to the whole footprint that we were talking about earlier. Okay. Uh, we have a, a small barrel program that we're growing pretty rapidly, so actually like – um, we didn't really talk too much about the history of the building, but it's a pretty cool old uh, uh, car dealership that's been around since 1923. Oh, cool. And they had a ramp that they moved cars up and down, and that's about two foot thick of concrete. And the rest of the way up, and this is a long stretch of area, uh, is all hauled out. And that's actually our barrel aging room, which <laughs> is pretty badass. And uh, we've been Understood. throwing that out. But for all of those beers <laughs> – uh, cost effectively wise, it was like, hey, let's do bombers for tasting room releases because I can't justify sending this to account that's going to be ridiculously expensive at the scale that we're doing it. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's be almost four pack. Four pack. Uh, it's it's yeah. growing and it's fun. And, yeah. The labeling is cool too. I was just putting it on the webcam for our what listeners because uh, for the peril, it's a skeleton yeah. riding a rocket barrel. Oh, like in yeah. Doctor Strange Love. There you go. Is that an allusion to Doctor Strangelove? You guys are catching a lot of our references. So, uh, Eric, who's our uh, marketing coordinator, uh, actually does all the graphics uh, currently. It used to be me and uh, Frank, who's one of the owners, that did all the graphics. And uh, I brought a guy on uh, a little over a year ago who's an absolute rock star, and he's killing it. He did that Pulp Friction label, too. Uh, he did our new IPA label and uh, you know most of our bottles since then. And he's doing great, great, really fun work. <laughs> Uh, but we're all a bunch of uh, movie nerds and stuff, too. Like, our Berliner is called a bizarre gardening accident, which is a nod to Spinal Tap. 
Nice. And, uh, <laughs> we, we like cool shit no one else knows about. <laughs> no, nobody knows about that at all. That's kind of the the fun part about <laughs> having a having a business model that you can have a bunch of names. Right. Is you just come up with weird shit. I'd be into that. It's the only way things work these days, man. I mean, right. there's Everything's every taken. corner you turn to get into something. I mean, my IPA is called Intellectual Property Ale. <laughs> I saw that, which is... <laughs> That's pretty good. I do like that, too. And honestly, because of the motor works, um, both the logo and the name... And by the way, I'm I'm down with gearheads. I enjoy cars quite a bit. I expected everything to be related to the one theme, and I'm pleasantly surprised that you guys didn't feel that you have to just stick to a uh, motor works theme with your beers. Thanks. Yeah, we like to have fun with it. It's, uh, you know, we we're definitely rooted in it. It's a bunch of old engineers and just beerheads and gearheads and. You know, our assistant brewer, lead brewer now, whatever we're calling his title these days, Jose, uh, he's been with us since the beginning also. Uh, You know, him and Bruce, who's our other, uh, you know, main brewer, are absolutely, uh, you know, (laughs) they are, they ride bikes, they bring their bikes in all the time, they, uh, you know, work on their bikes, and, uh, you know, Jose also drives an El Camino, which nice we're uh, got a fun project to talk about but not today uh, <laughs> um sorry right. we never uh, the scoops. So they're doing some cool stuff but it just kind of exudes through everything that we do it's like you know we we pipe in our own stuff and do really really creative ways about making shit work <laughs> love it well the beers are fantastic and i appreciate so much you guys sharing them with us and sending us enough to take home that was nice of you as well um you should keep up the good work and listeners uh you guys got to go check out this brewery uh you can look at motorworksbrewing.com or if you happen to be in florida uh, it looks like it's also a really cool city uh, to visit yeah um, not just not just the the beer and the brewery um, but go check it all out, motorworksbrewing.com. And then, um, guys, uh, Bob, Barry, thanks so much for being on the show with us. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you for having us. Great. Yeah, thanks. You, thanks a lot. I, I've been gone for a few weeks. You gave me my first healthy buzz on my nice. first on my first <laughs> show back. So uh, I appreciate that. I'm going to keep drinking your beer tonight. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. All right, guys. Dude, don't let Bebo steal it all. Uh, I will not. <laughs> and are you guys going to be out at the Great American Beer Festival again this year? Uh, possibly. We're still debating on it. Uh, kind of going through that expansion right now. So uh, it's me cracking the whip on the brewers and uh, also trying to fit, you know, make the sales keep rocking. So we're we're definitely going to send beer out there. Uh, the uh, Florida Brewers Guild is going to be pouring our pulp friction out there. So that would be cool. But uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to send someone uh, this year or not. Okay. But, uh, We'll, we'll see. That's supposed to be on Tuesday's meeting, so I'm going to wake up with the hangover and figure it out. Okay. Well, let us know. It would be nice to see you out there. And But otherwise, we have a lot of BN listeners that go to JABF. So, guys, it sounds like you can taste the uh, the grapefruit IPA we were just ra- raving about, which is the Pulp Friction, yeah. at the Florida Brewers Guild at JABF. So that's why I was asking, just so people can come try the beer. Um, all right, guys. Thanks again. I appreciate it. You guys take care. Have a good one. Thank you. Later, guys. Thanks. All right. There you go. Well, we learned a lot <clears throat> from that We did interview. learn a lot from that, which is weird. I thought my first show back we wouldn't do shit. Uh, but, um, <laughs> you hoped. <laughs> you didn't think. <laughs> no, that was really cool, and the beer was great. Like the beer? Is very um, interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, man, that, that grapefruit that IPA, fun. right? Oh, yeah. And I love that they were like, yeah, fuck it. We're going to call it Pulp Friction. It is not a New England IPA. Right. We're gonna, we're, like they're, too. they're taking it back. They should. <laughs> they're taking the, the, original the, pulp the, pulp, the pulp name back, uh, which is cool. All right. Um, got to get us to a break. Okay. I have to pee. Me too. However. Hey, me too. Just Wait real quick, the Homebrew guys. Label Awards are upon us once again. They are. Um, that's right. The Homebrew Label Awards are back. You can submit your artwork at the Homebrew Label Uh Not the. Uh, at Homebrew Label And let your homebrewing peers shower you with votes. The labels with the most votes can win fabulous prizes. Uh, pretty easy, right? Uh, last year, we handed over uh, $5,000 worth of prizes to winners. And this year, uh, Grog Tag is doing it again. No labels, no problem. You can check out all the cool labels being submitted and cast your vote on your favorite ones. Help your fellow homebrewers achieve 
achieve fame and glory. Just go to homebrewlabelawards.com. Uh, submit your entries. Vote for your friends. Do the whole thing. Homebrewlabelawards.com. All right. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got some feedback to do. Uh, we've got some more beer to drink yeah. and um, some fun to be had. Plus, we'll do our Twitter game wrap-up. Somebody will be a winner tonight. Feedback. Everybody else will be a loser. Uh, hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. Listening to the Brewcasters. Brewcasters on the Brewing Network. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Check out their brand new patent-pending mash and boil 110-volt electric mashing and boiling unit. This compact all-stainless unit lets you mash, sparge, and boil just about anywhere that has a 110-volt plug. Double wall construction adds to efficiency and safety, and a precise thermostat keeps temperatures where you want them. Unlike insulated buckets and converted coolers, multiple temperature Rest mashing is easy to do, all for under 300 bucks. They also feature the Mark II Work Pump, a magnetic drive high temperature pump that does the work of pumps that cost twice as much, as well as exclusive Brewer's Edge regulators and quality Keg King kegs and disconnects. Check them out today at WilliamsBrewing.com to brews their vast selection. With over 20 years of experience making world class craft beer and more than 100 gold medals in international competitions, Moylan's Brewing Company is not just a pretty face in craft beer. Just ask Brendan Moylan. What do we got here? The beer of the hour. Moylan's, gotta love that big M. It's like a sign of awesomeness. It's got an extra kick to it. Let's pour this bad boy. Oh, Easy, oh yeah. Oh, Moylan's. The end of the night when the kids are finally in bed, the wife's in bed, <laughs> nobody's bothering your ass anymore. That's Moylan's time. Moylan's is for you. Yeah. It's to help you out. Yeah. It helps me out. What? Well, because it's freaking awesome. Northern California brewed. It's brewed with love. With love? Oh, yeah. Tremendous. And it's always best where? Moylan's. you got to try it on tap at Moylan's. In Novato. They're freaking awesome. Not only because I own the brewery, because I love the beer. Cheers! Boom! Kilt Lifter Scotch Ale takes big beers to a whole new level with rich malt balanced perfectly with delicate hops and now comes in four pack tall boy cans so you can take the party on the go. Or come to the brewery, take a tour, and try any of Moylan's fresh creations right from the source. Check them out at Moylan's.com. <laughs> Army, have you heard the latest at Hop Tech? Since Hop Tech has doubled in size after a huge expansion, Jade and Roberto can stock even more of the best quality homebrewing supplies and equipment. Over 60 kick ass varieties of hops and malts, monster truckloads of quality brewer's yeast, including White Labs, Y yeast, and multiple dry yeasts. They even have all grain systems from Grain Fathers and Ruby Street Brew Systems, thanks to Jade, the brand new all grain brewer. And don't forget about their 10% discount to all BN Army members. Jade and Roberto are waiting for you and all of your brewing questions over at hoptech.com. Hoptech, totally not sucking since 1983. Hey guys, what will it be? I'm not sure. What do you recommend? A lot of people seem to like the Hefeweizen. Is that a German Hefeweizen or more of an American style wheat beer? I'm not sure, but I can give you a taste. Okay, great. Great. The Cicerone Certification Program certifies and educates beer professionals in order to elevate the beer experience for consumers. Unfortunately, not every bar is staffed with certified beer servers who can guide their customers through a beer list. Here you go, guys. Let me know what you think of the Hefeweizen. 
Oh, yeah. That's definitely more of an American meat. But I can hardly tell because this beer just smells like sour butter. I wonder how long it's been since they cleaned the draft lines. Yeah, and look at the bubbles on the side of the glass. It's filthy. Somebody should tell these guys about the Cicerone program. For sure. How about we head somewhere else for another beer? Your server should give beer the same respect you do. Request quality. The Cicerone certification program offers four levels of beer certification, in-person classes, and course books for beer professionals. Check them out at Cicerone.org. The Cicerone Certification Program. We know beer. Hey, my brewing brothers and sisters. This is Jamel Zanisha, and I want to tell you about Heretic Evil Twin. You might be familiar with my homebrew recipe, which uses massive late hopping to create a balance between the malty sweet and the hoppy bitter, along with an outrageous malt and hop character. I wanted a beer with the same bold hop and malt character, so we played around with the homebrew recipe until we were able to make a great commercial version, too. We've created a beer rich in malt character, full of caramel, toast, biscuit, and an ever-so-subtle roast note. On top of that, we piled in an insane amount of citra and Columbus hops at the end of the boil, as well as in dry hopping. This damn-the-cost approach to hopping gives Heretic's Evil Twin a great blast of citrus and tropical fruit that can't be matched by any other hop. The result is a bold, malty, hoppy, but easy-drinking beer. This is our top seller, our flagship beer, and I couldn't be prouder of it. Cheers. To find Heretic Beers near you, click on Find Some at hereticbrewing.com. All right, welcome back to the program. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, great time with the guys from Motorworks. Yeah, yep, and absolutely. Good beer. I'm going to finish the show with a pint of the their Pulp is- Friction. System of Down. Oh, okay. You know exactly what it is. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, no, see, there's a can over there. Yeah. What you like? Which one? You want that one? I can reset that for you. Oh, no, that one's uh, at you. I'll share that here. Uh, Oh, no, 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 that's right. That's okay. Because I still got a, a little bit of society. I got a lot of things in front of me. Weren't there six of those or just four of them? Uh, pick, pick a something. Maybe they, maybe they all just didn't make it out of the fridge. Uh, what do you want? Yeah. I want one of those pieces. All, all right, right, real quick. Share that with him. Share it. I want to show it to some brewery. Pop, pop that up. Don't forget about uh, the all-new How to Brew from Brewers Publications. Uh, I was going through my beer books today to send some over to our Fort Collins location. We have a little uh, homage to the studio there. We're putting a bunch of uh, brewing books in. And I sent my old copy of How to Brew because I now have a new copy of John Palmer's uh, How to Brew, which is just really great. It's time to replace that old dog-eared copy of John Brew's, uh, John Palmer's How to Brew. Uh, our friends at Brewers Publications have just published the fourth edition of How to Brew, and it's essentially a totally new book. It uh, clocks in at 600 pages, and every chapter has been updated and expanded, uh, and there are five totally new chapters. Uh, whether you want simple, surefire instructions for making your first beer, or you're a seasoned home brewer working with all-grain batches, this book has something for you. From ingredients and methods to recipes and equipment for brewing beer, at home, How to Brew is loaded with valuable information on brewing techniques and recipe formulation. So you can grab your copy today at your preferred beer book vendor, or buy it from the Brewers Association store uh, if you want to get the book and support craft breweries at the same time. More info is available Available at brewerspublications.com. And you can probably go to howtobrew.com and learn all about it, too. Probably. So uh, our good friend John, uh, another great publication from him. Just check it out. This is one of the new chapters, uh, Justin chapter. It should be. How to how not to brew? How did Justin brew? Yeah. He didn't consult me. He probably just combed through all the shows. And- uh, that's enough. Mm-hmm. Do a whole chapter on that. He probably assumes if you don't have the book, you already brew like Justin. It, you know Ooh. what? That's a good point. That's a good point. That man. would be my, if, he, if I had been asked to write a, the forward, a, yeah, or yeah. something, you know, a review. It would be like if you don't want to brew like me, right? Uh, have this book right now. God, speaking of forwards, I got to see when my forward gets published in John's book. Oh, is it not out the yet? Beer? No, it's not out yet. They're probably redoing the forward. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to see when uh, that comes out. Maybe they like, asked you written a thousand words. That's what they're changing. I'm going to email them right now. <laughs> you, you wrote a chapter. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. It all if I'm writing about myself, I'm being very verbose. It all started in Livermore in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> Two white middle class people. 
yeah. move to a sleepy little town. Of course, we're talking about the new book from our friend John over at Beer Law Center, who brings you the feedback we're about to give you. Um, so go check it out at BeerLawCenter.com, and you can probably get updates on, on that book over there, too. <laughs> All right. Well, I like the change here. You know, since I've been gone, even the feedback is, since I've been gone. is addressed differently. <laughs> since I've been gone. This one from Aaron starts. Jason. <laughs> hello, uh, Jason. Yeah, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> but, but today you enraged me. Uh, yeah. Oh, your, it's from mother-in-law. Your cavalier attitude toward the Brewers Association's Advertising Complaint Review Panel is a sign of youthful ignorance and inexperience. <laughs> By the way, I'm 39 years old. I was going to say, you just you appreciate youthful. being called youthful, don't you? Youthful. All right. I, I will go on, but I, you're going to have to give me a little background. Um, what is the Advertising Complaint Review Panel, and what is this in reference to? It's not really. It, it's it's in reference to the BA saying that uh, if you win an award with an offensive beer name, oh, okay. you won't be uh, called... Uh, yeah, it won't, you won't, it won't be mentioned, and you can't use the metal uh, or their um, property, I, I guess, in, in your marketing. I see. That's all it is. So they haven't actually created an advertising no. review complaint review panel. This no. was you guys talking about that. He, this guy was being smart. I don't. The advertising complaint review panel is nothing we talked about at all. It was just us doing a beer news segment um, on. On this new I thing, I was here for that. So this was the flying, a while I think ago. it was no, it was the flying dog in reference to maybe the flying dog pulling out because of because pulling of pulling out of what of the BA. They quit the Brewers Association. Oh, so I remember. Uh, so we did talk about this new rule okay. while I was here. Okay, it sounds like you covered it again. Maybe when flying dog when flying dog so they quit. Yeah, so they decided we're quitting the Brewers Association based on this new thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So That's you what guys, I said. You guys talked about that. Yeah. Uh, so Aaron goes on to say, uh, craft beer is far from dying. It will continue to grow, but moves moves oh. like this review panel put it on the fast track to also being bland, stupid, and inhuman. Uh, it doesn't matter how cool and laid back the members of panel are or think they are. Of course, they just want to protect themselves and others from stupid beer names, right? Well, these sorts of review panels, Aaron goes on to say, uh, always start out with good intentions and then almost immediately turn into power grabs, ug ugly politics, and then amazing amounts of misdirected energy that destroys lives that were once productive and fun. Uh, give credit to Flying Dog Brewery for having the experience to recognize when it's time to get out. Sincerely, from Aaron. Oh, so the upside? So, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, okay. Almost so. always. It's I didn't, like, God, he didn't finish with, I still like you guys, yeah. Aaron. <laughs> I didn't know that someone had pulled out because of this. I think that's yeah. fascinating. Me too. Um, it's probably why you guys covered it. That's yeah. a good news story right there. Yeah, I think so. Um, and especially from Flying Dog, who has Raging Bitch and Pearl Necklace, and they have some, you know, offensive beer names in the quote in the, offensive quote offensive right yeah, right yeah. right uh yeah that's interesting and i think we were just saying like hey well if they don't want to be a part of it they don't have to be a part of it i think it's a little like well i'm going to take my ball and go home no. um but i don't care i don't know i think it's fine if you want to have a, a a panel that deems this beer offensive this beer name offensive to the greater people then great don't yeah. don't be a part of their their the organization. organization, and they're not, and everything's fine. This is how America works. Everything is great. It is. You don't I, have to be a part of it. it. It is. I do think that there's such a broader spectrum of what the Brewers Association does that it's unfortunate that maybe a move like this, um, maybe it sounds like wasn't discussed with membership. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a move made. Um, and some of membership, at least one um, right, right. in uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Flying Dog. Flying Dog. Um, you know, decided, hey, that's enough for us to just get out of here. Yeah. Uh, that is interesting. Um, I would want you know to be part of the discussion if a if I'm a member of an organization. Well, they have know. a governing board, right? Uh, they do. That's true. Uh, so they must. Uh, something I guess they probably would have like blessed, right? That the governing board may have done that. It's yeah. just that. So they're yeah. going to say we speak for some number of the yeah. membership. There's like a kid outside in the bar right now who's 
either fascinated with our show or really bored. He, he he's, just put him on. He's, he's said yes. hello to um, me quite a bit. He's, he's a tumbly boy. He's Vivo, been go, out there. Go see if he wants to come in, into the he's studio. He's a tumbly boy. No. He's yeah. been there uh, come on, Vivo, come on, come a on. lot. Like, I've he seen comes him. out there a lot. Like his, his, his parents, parents come a lot. Come here and get oh, tossed. Oh, okay. and by inviting him in, you'd be inviting them in. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, just yeah, I don't want that. Not the parents. Don't encourage them. And then we pull the you blind. You can't just invite kids into places and say their parents aren't allowed. I can. Yeah. <laughs> can you send your kids <laughs> in the studio and you're, you can't monitor yeah, the situation? Yeah, we had a Oh, parents. I can. Are you, are you saying his parents are a mess? I don't judge people. <laughs> so I'm not asking to judge them. You said them. they get tossed. Okay. What do you mean? Is okay. that a judgment? I just mean that it's... Are you want me to go do the it? Guy gets the kid's just the like table. cartwheeling oh, outside the window yeah. just, and a, waving a, hello. Yeah. And, he's uh, a semi-fat, tumbly kid, so <laughs> are you fun? This is not his first time trying to get attention from our, from that window. I That's sure. what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Well, maybe maybe his parents should dress him like a hoppy double IPA and then he oh, gets so some attention. I can just go out there and say, can we just have him? No, I trust Bevo's judgment on this. Uh, we'll oh, okay. Him. Yeah. Uh, all right, so thank you, Aaron, for writing in, and uh, there you have it. All right, mm-hmm. Neo Brew writes in. Uh, this was about Three Sons Brewing. Um, Would you like the background now or a, later? A guest that you had on the show while I was gone, it sounds like. No, uh, so Three Sons, it was oh, a story oh, oh. we did. Yeah. Right, on the three privileged white people who are opening a brewery. Yeah, one's from Anheuser Busch, one's from... Mandavi. And who's the third? Uh, restaurateur or something like that. Okay. That I've never heard of. College buddy that likes expensive shoes like the rest of them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and it was basically a Forbes, like, you know, what's the opposite of a hit piece? <laughs> but it was a Forbes article written in the worst way. It was horribly written. It was terribly written, and I didn't want to... I actually just read the article. It's one of the few things I've actually just read completely verbatim <laughs> what they said, because it was written so descriptively and so off base the art the author and the people being quoted had no idea about beer one of the quotes in there was um you know there are no american pilsners owned uh, there are no pilsners or loggers in america owned by americans anymore wow okay uh he said that they have a a thick binder full of rules and regulations to follow when making this beer so it's very very good <laughs> And oh, that was a positive thing. That was a positive thing, which, of course, there's no thick binder to make any beer. I mean, come on. So my, my take on it was it, it read like a very well-written Trump speech. Okay. Where it was just very, like, hyperbole and very, like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but here are some flowery words. And here's an Instagram photo of me in a deep V with some ostrich boots on mm-hmm. looking <laughs> longingly at a keg. Okay. Uh, so, All right. So Neo Brew writes in about that. I was in Stitches listening to the crew comment on this article. Great segment. I couldn't contain myself when you got to the part about lager brands not being owned by Americans. Yeah. Isn't that because the Bushes sold out to AB InBev? Uh, who was making more lagers than they were? Um, well, clearly that's where the Forbes article perspective came from. That was that was a direct quote from the guys who own, who the, the yeah. three the sons. Oh, Bruno they said nobody's making an American lager. And, that, and that's why it was only natural for them to I want to make something that they can enjoy really good food with. What a bunch of fucking um, dickheads. Well, the, <laughs> author, the author was clueless about beer. Yeah. And he was just taking them like Oh, the just, word. yeah, everything. Yeah. And he yeah. should have said, like, well, that's, that's, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, where did journalism go? Where right. you, like, a check facts when you get a quote? <laughs> I'll tell you what. The Mondavi kid, I think, has a property with five yurts on it. Oh. Yeah. And one yurt oh. is done like a saloon, and that's where they have all their brainstorming. It was oh, just like, God. God, the most vomit-inducing, bile-enriched. God, it was yeah. terrible. Uh, but I still it was, don't know what a yurt is. A yurt, really? a yurt is a you know small igloo-type thing. Uh, it's, tent. It's a tent yeah. with sides and a floor. And, and how about having five, each with a theme? Yeah, yeah. it was just, dude. You would have, wow. you would have really, really thoroughly enjoyed that segment. It's a yeah. terrible article. No, it's, it's full of, written. it's full of everything that we kind of stand against. It's pretty good. Okay, so we had a great time with it. it All right, yurt. Um, yurt. Yurt. Five. yurt, yurt brewing, five yurt brewing. That's what I'm going to name my brewery. Five yurt. Um. I'm getting a correction from our guest, which okay. I think is him. is a valid correction. They were just sending our guest today, Motorworks Brewing Company, that Three Sons Brewing is actually a brewery out of Florida. 
um, ah. currently working oh. out of a place called Flagler Brewing or something like that. The Sons Brewery yes. is Barrel and Sons Brewery. There you go. So our the the uh, listener who wrote in about Three Sons, this is a great clarification because we don't want to disparage anybody here. No, no, no. That is not the same thing. Three Sons Brewing is a different brewery out of Florida. Um, the brewery we're talking about with the rich douchebags is Barrel and Sons. Barrels and Sons or Barrel and Sons or whatever the whatever it is. Um, so good. thank you for the clarification, oh, very Barry. Important. Thank yeah. you. Well, that's great. All right. By the way, we do that shit all the time. So wow, our that's guest true. is still listening. Yeah, well, he they should tune in every week and correct yeah. all of us. <laughs> exactly. Right. All our right. bullshit. Yeah, we'll have awesome. Get the uh, their own channel. What isn't like yeah. midnight where they are and it's. <laughs> Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Fact checkers. Well, they were having the beers like we were, so they're hopefully, oh, they're, hopefully they're having we're some fun. Same All right. Dave writes in about Brewing with Style. Hey, all. I'm just wondering what's happened with Brewing, and Sti- Brewing with Style. If Jamil is too busy, that's totally understandable. I'm just hoping for an official word on whether the show will continue. No. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry to Jamil to uh, disparage his name or make people think he's not been around. Um, I have Brewing with Style shows in the can. I have them from uh, the National Homebrewers Conference and and maybe, yeah, um, is that all I have? You're thinking of Bruce Strong. Oh, uh, Bruce Brewing with style. style is on a temporary hiatus. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. See, see everybody needs to clarify me tonight. Yeah, Brewing with Style is on a temporary hiatus. It's not just that Jamil is busy. I actually encourage Jamil to take a break from that show. We're going to reformat it and uh, come back with, with something else. And, and Jamil actually wanted to keep going, but I could see on his face <laughs> that he needed a break, for God's sake. Yeah, he does. Uh, and he and he and he's just the type of worker who won't do that for himself. So yeah. I had uh, Bevo strong encourage him to take a brief hiatus from uh, Brewing with Style. Uh, a, until we reformat it. And B, until everybody's schedule um, settles down enough that we can do a, a good quality show for you. So uh, that has nothing to do with Jamil. That's me encouraging him to take a break. Twelve years, that guy. Been just working, 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 not only here, but uh, everywhere else. And so I had to force him to sit down for a second. <laughs> Okay, Ben Bikes for Beer writes in. Um, This is about the August Shell show. Uh, He says, yo, hats off to JP and everyone aboard for the great interview with Shells. Uh, Easily one of my favorite episodes ever. I admittedly love my IPAs, JP, but I'm totally with you on the low ABV lager train. The bit about presenting two American lagers showcasing the two unique yeast strains at their origin was fascinating. I absolutely must visit Shells at some point in my life. Still can't get over stealing your own tools from your beer museum to rebuild oak <laughs> tanks that, you, that your brewery constructed to survive through Prohibition. Um, to now make sour beer. Fucking beer, man, he says. <laughs> uh, keep up the great work. Been listening since Dougie's Nutters, maybe even before then. So. That was a good story. Uh, you know, they're doing traditional loggers there uh, at, at August Shell. And Jace... Um, the the brewer there he he got the 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 go ahead to do Berliner Weiss program, okay. and they had these big fooders that like the guy said in the letter they could put together to survive prohibition to do other you know other things, um, but they needed to rebuild them to clean them out. I think I'm maybe paraphrasing incorrectly, but whatever they're all dried out. They had to wet, yeah, wet them. they couldn't figure out how to take them apart and clean them and put them back together because they were like hand done in the late 1800s or whatever right okay. so they had to go to the museum they have the brewing museum on site to get the tools out of the display case wow. to then use to craft the 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 barrels they're using it's just it was a fascinating story that's so cool yeah all right very good good show all right here's more on sun's brew um from Brian, esteemed members of the session, he writes in. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, wow, they, they are. You know, they are addressing me a little better than you. Well, they, 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 kind of nice. they lead into this like yeah. really nice See? at first, and then yeah, precious. Or yeah, I don't right. know. They just um, yeah, um, you dumb dick. Or, See, but, you uh, always uh, thought it was you that provoked the negative uh, commentary, but clearly well, maybe it was, it's you. It was me. Oh shit! Uh, I mean, they took it out on you, but I provoked right. it. Yeah, right. Uh, I guess that's why you're good at it. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, so. Esteemed members of the session, thank you for introducing me to Sunsbrew. Um, 
which again is barrels and suns. Yeah, uh, sun. But yeah, so barrels and suns. Uh, for the first time in a while, I'm having fun reading Untapped. Uh, <laughs> their 4.8 percent quote imperial long aged pilsner brew uh, made from several malts has some great comments on. By the it. way, their long aged 30 days. 30 days is from, long aged from mash in to bottling. He should have. I days. mean, the, one of the kids at least had family working at that brewery for I 30, know. 40 years. And he passed it over from his from his dad. The, the, the article even had quotes from the three like fathers of well, the, from the sons. Because sun. he was too busy doing coke off a stripper's ass his whole life <laughs> yeah. to figure out that they were actually making beer at that brewery. Probably doing strippers' asses off of piles of coke. <laughs> yeah. it's, probably, but, it's probably more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. But, That's I mean, a good point. Yeah, like third, and, so, and, and he was touting like that it's such a long time. Like it's longer than anybody else ever ever uh, spends on their loggers these days. <laughs> or they just call it like excessively long yeah, or something, some, oh, something yeah. like God. that. Start to finish. That's what I mean. It's, it was a Trump speech, man. It was just yeah. insane. <laughs> it was fake news. Uh, okay, so here's some of the comments on Untapped, apparently, about the um, Barrels and Sons beer. Um, Here's one. 30 days is not, I repeat, is not a long time for a logger. <laughs> Your privilege is showing you fucking spoiled zeros. Jeez. <laughs> point, point 0.25 stars. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here's another one. You can taste the privilege that went into making this. <laughs> Might be better out of an ostrich boot. Point 0.5 stars. Uh, here's another. Please keep having asinine sponsored content made for your pulled yourself up on your own merits bullshit brewery. Point two five stars. <laughs> uh, so that's this could be a good ongoing segment is just oh. to read the reviews. Read the reviews of all. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So uh, do me a favor, JP. Keep an eye on the uh, Untapped and the rape whatever they wherever they review them. Okay. I, this could easily be ongoing ongoing fodder. That'd We're never going to get a dime out of those assholes. So oh, far. there's no way. Yeah, I don't know if we would want it. The ostrich boot was like how how two of them met because they lived in the same area forever and didn't know the other Idiots. existed. They went into like a bar or something, and one of the kids saw the other kid was wearing the same kind of ostrich leather boots that he wore, and then they were best buds ever since. <laughs> and like direct I, uh, quote when, dude, it, when like, he read that, all I envisioned was this little douche playing pool or something and seeing another little douche walk in the door and like look at his shoes and then instantly like had stars in his eyes like. That's just how that yeah. broke down the in my brain. The music played as they saw yes. And they, like, slowly and ran they were like, each other. ostrich boots. Yeah. It was like 18, yeah, the guy, 1985, the guy, like, like uh, movie. Yeah, and yeah. The guy who wrote the piece did not phrase it so that you wouldn't get that feeling. Right. It was just, like... Stupid. Maybe no, the guy was actually like on our side. Think maybe about, think about like maybe the guy was well, forced to write the article because of some some money exchange. He might have dumbed it down. Some sponsor You're thing, right. and he actually was doing us a favor. Those of us who could read between the fucking lines, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's possible. <laughs> Uh, well, I think if you read it, you might come, you would definitely come to that conclusion. I think you're so. giving him too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he says, I hope more people like the ones above leave their honest feedback. Thanks for a great show from Brian. And P.S., thanks for the eye dip. Um, uh, now I just I have speak. to wait on the paternity test option. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wonder if their beer's any good. <clears throat> well, I get, we're going to have to try it. People we're, are trying yeah. it, apparently. Where's it's this fucking beer? Napa. But it's only sold in Napa? Yeah, that's what he was saying. Because can we, can they're send, still dialing in the process right. of some fucking shit. Can right. we send Bevo, Bevo to get some? Go, you got to go to Napa. But I knew this was going to come. <laughs> Road trip. Sure. Make a day out of I'll it. Have of some it. wine. Yeah. Uh, but we got to try this beer. The Uber's uh, on the BN. I'm going with you then. Take Sam with you too. If we're going wine tasting. No, because then I won't have any fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, take us. Here's, uh, here's some more on the um, <laughs> no. on the same no. article. This is from Brian. Uh, so while streaming your last episode and listening to the abortion of an article that Forbes wrote about those frat boys brewing flavored piss water, uh, I decided to Google this place and see what came up. The website was lacking, but the Facebook page is great. Apparently, Skylar Gray approved, so it must be great. If you don't know who that is, it's some chick who sings songs sometimes. Does anybody know who Skylar Gray? Even Bevo doesn't know. No. Usually, when it comes to bad oh, music, hell. Um, don't be rude. Okay. <laughs> like a YouTube channel. 
Uh, he says, I've attached the link so you can see pictures of three douchebag rich guys taking beauty shots next to brewing equipment. Should we look well, at that's it? the article hint. Uh, yeah, um, um, I'm going to give you a yes. They were sitting no on cakes on and stuff like that. I'm just going to that. Wow, what's up Nobody with Nobody had the, a mesh paddle. It's like the weirdest face <laughs> I've ever seen. Nobody had, oh, that's good. They were oh, sitting it, on cakes. Oh, that's uh, inside musician Skylar Gray's <laughs> liquor cabinet. Uh, the singer, songwriter, and Eminem protege opens up about her love of red wine and why she no longer drinks bourbon before she performs. <laughs> she's and drinking she's, out of a bottle. But yeah, but she's drinking these douchebags' beers. Out, of the, I think out of the bottle. Yeah. Then, yeah, the next photo is great. Made in America, made by American sons. <laughs> and there's a boot next to a bottle of beer because they're hardworking dudes, man. They are hardworking dudes. We ought to get them in on the show. A $700 boot. Let's get an exclusive, I'm thinking. See I really do can, want to. See Who if they can handle us. Um, like the attention, I think. All right. Let's see. Witbox writes in. I don't know why it starts with Ronnie. but uh, I don't know why either. Oh, Roni. Macaroni. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bevo, I'm making some mac and cheese and hot dogs for my son, and um, I'm trying it by boiling the dogs in the same pot as the pasta. I think this will achieve the same result as you described on one earlier session about boiling the pasta in hot dog water. I have high expectations for this. Well, all the best. Did I? They did it wrong. Did the I hot, really talk hot, about that? I'm pretty hot dog sure water you did. first, and then yeah, pasta the in the water. Yeah, why Forget do you cook you your pasta in hot dog water? I don't. I mm. really don't. I don't. Know, <laughs> I don't know what. This is one of those things that I totally didn't question. I was like, of course she does. Right. <laughs> She's people. Well, so like, it doesn't seem no, yeah. You, it doesn't seem like something I wouldn't do. I just don't remember <laughs> doing it. Well, your kid's not dead, and your husband's not dead. Well, yeah. it probably made the pasta more flavorful. There you go. No. Well, we'll hope for a report. I, I don't think you put it right though. You have to do water the hot dog water, water first, and then do the <laughs> pasta in the hot dog water. All right, here's a long one from Parker, but I do like the ending, and in fact, it is going to require a test, B. We're going to need you to go out into the to the bar. My son's not uh, writing into this. Put your right? titties on. Put your feet, your shoes back. Different Parker. Uh, it says, "Hey, Brewing Network crew um, and Justin?" Question mark. Um, <laughs> I'm emailing because of the quote. People these days are asking the bartender what the haziest or juiciest beer they have is, quote, comment, at the end of every New England IPA conversation, followed by the, quote, they used to ask what the highest ABV or highest IBU beer was, yeah. and now this is the stupid new thing. That's facts. All right, then there's a bunch of bullshit in between, um, which basically, though, he's saying at the end... Um, I think bullshit. He's saying, please poll the bartenders at your fine establishment. Has anyone ever actually asked for the haziest or juiciest beer on the menu? Uh, it just doesn't seem that common, he says, if it ever even happens at all. And I'm tired of listening to what seems like a Hannity-esque anecdote to end all New England IPA conversations if it isn't a thing. I don't know what that means. I think he's saying that we the might fake be news. fake news yeah. fucking bullshit. If we are, if by we, you and Beardy, are yeah, making right. comments that, like, the new thing now is to go to the bar and ask. Did you make a comment or either of you oh, yeah. no, I, saying I said this now comment. people go and ask for the juiciest or yeah, haziest? Yeah. And I got IPA. it directly from the people who work here. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> and I wrote this guy back and I told him that. I was like, Liz, that, who do you think I heard the anecdote from, dude? Well, I want you to go ask anyway. Now that I know this, it's not as exciting. It doesn't sound unreasonable if somebody would ask that. Uh, well, it depends on if there's somebody there to cover them. He's is, good. Who is it? It's Jason, and I can grab What's Your Bucket to cover it. Okay, good. Bring Jason. You good. know, What's Your Bucket. Oh, jeez. And, you know, and, uh, you know uh, look, it, I don't know if it's happened okay. to Jason necessarily, but I do know that a couple, at least two other people who work here, I think one of them was in the room when I was saying it, and he was nodding okay. at me as he and was walking out And that's where you got here. the comment from, okay, well, yeah. that's fair, that's valid, yeah. and we'll, we'll just do this for fun. Yeah. Um, that is already Cause I, valid, because he was, yeah, he seems to be saying he's calling bullshit yeah. that, that doesn't happen. And but you're saying you didn't make it up. I didn't make it up, I heard it directly. And as far as, like, the other, you know, IBU, you know, what's your strongest beer, what's your, you know, working beer fests in my time, um, and talking to 
bartenders and talking to brewers, especially after that whole thing, it's it, it's not anecdote, pure anecdotal. I've witnessed it myself. I see. And I've talked to people. I have friends who have that happen to, and, and I'll have this discussion about, hey, aren't we glad the IBU war is over? Yeah, because I got fucking tired of people going, hey, what's your strongest beer? What's your strongest beer? <laughs> okay. What's your hoppiest beer? Okay. And, you know, when you're working at a beer fest all day. Your... Now it's, and from, you know, anecdotally, I guess, because I haven't seen it directly. Well, it's still, it's there not are anecdotal, people who are it's, saying, it's circumstantial. There you go. Uh, um, people are asking, they're using haziness as a level of judgment on if the beer is good enough. Okay. All right. That's all of course, I mean. hazy's, hazy's a new thing, right? I mean, it's not like hazy's been around that long. So people well, are trying it's to find It's been around for hundreds of years. Well, what are you talking it's about? been around as the cool thing. In it's natural, natural style. Yeah. In right. yeah. normal styles where it's yeah. supposed to be hazy, yeah. But yeah. Hazy it hasn't hazy been ideas. cool for that long. Okay. Yeah. Still not cool. Yeah. And I don't know if any, haziness has any, any sort of correlation to being better or not. Right. I think that they're just taking a book out of the out of the old Crosley handbook, where, which is where you take your defects and you make them cool. <laughs> or, or you figure out how to make them like a posi. You're like, yeah. no, I meant to do that. And again, I do yeah. want to mention... We have a podcast. We, we're we, irreverent. We yeah. want to be that way. We did yeah. not bring this topic up. This was feedback... So I don't want to hear any feedback about you always talk oh, about cloudy IPA. True, true. We just didn't want to make sure. And that. we're not going to talk about the cloudy IPA. We're just talking about whether or not it's ordered at the bar as what is your haziest or cloudiest right. beer. And then yeah, we're, not gonna, we're not going to judge the beer on this episode. We're Correct. just going to we're going to discuss Parker's uh, desire to know if it's if your statement is a real thing. That's true. Uh, which you've already stated. It, it actually came from bartenders here mm-hmm. at the Hop Grenade. Yep. Um, and well just to see if we can get verification from and, Jason. But I, and I think Jason would be the most honest where I think the other two people, you know, could have been lying. I'm not ju- I'm just saying, I don't know. I wasn't there when they were asked. I but see. those two are notorious did, liars. Now, now, did you... Le- <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did you lead the question? In other words, did you say, no, hey, no. Do, they offered that information before you said, do people order the hazy... Okay. Because I, I would never have thought in a million years to people would it, use yeah. that benchmark. and the, But they know that I hate the hazy thing. I just, I just get it out of my face, and I think it's retarded. Okay. But Who and, was it, by the way? Uh, Aaron and uh, Eric. Okay, those two fucking assholes don't count. They are lying fucking assholes. Asshole. They, they are. will say whatever you want yes. to make you like them. I know, and I hate them both, so which is pretty ironic. Uh, okay, that's You're right, true. Jason would do that. <laughs> yeah, no, Jason won't give Jason, a shit. No, he'll be like, you don't like me? Good. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't particularly like you. Now I can be honest with you. We have yeah. 30 seconds of Jason. Just get ready for that. Yeah, right. yeah uh, there he is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jason, uh, one of my favorite uh, bartenders here at the Hop Grenade. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, mostly because when we go out together, he gets me drunk and I throw up. <laughs> right. And he uh, looks like you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quick and easy. Uh, we had some feedback come in. Uh, sure. Jason here, the other Jason, JP, <laughs> JP. made, a, yeah. a, made the you. statement that, um, you know, it used to be that people went to the bar and said, hey, give me your strongest beer or give me your, your hop. IPA. Sure. His statement was that now people come to bars and say, D- give me your juiciest or your haziest IPA. Is this a thing that actually happens? Most Have definitely. You- really? <laughs> most, de- most definitely. Customers- we had a whole conversation about how you would be uh, the honest one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. People will come up and be like, hey, what's the what's the New England IPA on tap? Or really? what's the hazy beer? They just don't even care. They just want it to be... You know, wow. Money. Wow. That's the thing now. And now this this happens to happen to you once or this is now a common Daily. It, ha- it was the first thing someone asked me when I took the first order. Tonight? Yes. <laughs> uh, see cuz I I brought it up because wow. uh, Eric and Aaron had both told me this and we're like but those guys are fucking liars. And Jason will <laughs> Jason will actually say something honestly. Right. Did you, Fair swing, enough. Yeah. Did you swing on him? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I did I not come swing on him. <laughs> Would you say that it is t- Taken the place of like, what's your strongest beer or your hoppiest beer? Like, does that still happen at all? It's definitely the most common inquiry. It is now the most common uh, inquiry. Now, now, let me ask you this: on a uh, if a amateur uh, drinkers uh, a one and, a, and an expert drinkers a ten, where do you where do you see these people asking this question? Where do they fall on that time? In that, hmm. in that? Probably between like five and eight. 
They're oh, right so they're, so they're more like, experienced. So they're educated. They're some, some of them, yeah. Some of them just don't be, even care. Because it they used just to want be the hazy beer. The huh? ones asking for the high alcohol or the hoppy were on the lower sure. knowledge side, and now you're saying right. it could be. Yeah, for uh, example, when we get special can releases that are produced by breweries that are making hazy stuff, this shit's gone in like two hours. Wow, yeah. 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 It is definitely like the selling... Okay. God, All right. I'm so good. <laughs> well, fuck you, Carter. JP knew JP's he was JP's right, Justin. <laughs> yes! Uh, Thank you, Jason. Uh, I'll, slip no you, I'll slip you a 20 later, Jay. Don't worry about it. Fact checked. Yeah. Wow. Uh, God, I feel good. So there you go, Parker. It is happening, and, and I think that Jason's comments were relevant that he said it's the first thing that happened today, wow. and it happens every day. Yeah. Uh, cool. So there you go. Uh, anyway, he also says, thanks for helping me do cardio. Uh, I, I, too, hate it and uh, use your conversations to make it through. Parker, thanks for writing into us. I'm sorry. That <laughs> Living G- with my dad sucks. I'm sorry that no. JP was right. <laughs> All right, Larry dogs. writes in. Um, <clears throat> Can we, you read these before? I know. I'm just trying to figure out how much I want to read it. Uh, hey, all. Uh, last evening. Ooh. Not yesterday. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> last <laughs> Sounds like a fireside chat. Chicagoland's Binnie's Beverage Depot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I just like where it starts, right? Out down at the old Binnie's Beverage hey, Depot. Come on down to Beverage Depot. We got a $5.99 deal on Cuban Beverage. Five ninety nine. dollars Here we go. The Binnie's Beverage Depot. Now, you sitting down in that recliner, you can get up right now, put that foot down, get up to the Binnie's Beverage Depot. We got a special deal for you. Grab the kids, grab your cigarettes, grab the balloons. We got balloons, we got hot dogs for the kids. We got macaroni and cheese made in hot dog water. That's right, at Benny's Depot Special. We got shots of tequila cocaine in the back. Uh, and Benny's Beverage Depot. Right, clowns for the kids. Uh, they held their 10th annual homebrew competition, sponsored by Sam Adams, with Jim Cook as the head judge. Oh. And he says, we won. Yay. Uh, that's right, first place, we, I don't know who we is, um, brewed a dark Mexican. Mexican lager. So, uh, Vienna, Vienna lager. Yeah. With lots of meaning. Uh, the grand prize is an all expenses paid trip to the Great American Beer Festival. Wow. I can honestly say we would not, we wouldn't know as much as we do if it wasn't for the Brewing Network. So, I wanted to write to y'all oh. and say thank you. Golly. You're welcome. How uh, hide was at the GABF? Well, he wants advice on that. As a matter of fact, it'll be our first trip to the GABF, but not our first trip to Denver. So I was wondering if you have any tips and tricks for the beer festival. Oh, oh We don't know which session we'll be at, but hopefully we'll get to choose. And uh, while not at the GABF, we want to make our time in Denver as fulfilling as possible. So wondering if you'll be hosting any events or if you'll have recommendations for which bars, tap rooms, host Is this a family thing? Events. Uh, it's a club thing, I no, guess. No, no, I'm talking with them. It's no, like, I think it's his club that won. So, okay. I, I'm thinking about going. And okay, don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Well, you can go look on the Benny's Beverage Depot and find <laughs> out if it was a club competition. Oh, hell. But I think it was. Uh, well, I will first say that the Hop Grenade Fort Collins will be doing some pre-conference events, and I think on the Tuesday before JBF, we're going to be running a bus from Denver up to Fort Collins and back to help those of you who are just doing the Denver thing um, get to come have the Brewing Network wow. experience with with Tasty and myself. I will and be there. Whoever else we get out there. Um, so that's looking to be on Tuesday. I'll be posting more uh, details as soon as I have them. So that's one event uh, around there that I hope you could make and any other Brewing Network listener. Um, in terms of uh, tips and tricks about the GABF, I don't know, Tasty. There's not a whole lot to it, is there? Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, over the time, I've just, I just go to like two sessions. I go to Thursday night and then Saturday afternoon. Uh, yeah. So a good tip would be to avoid the Saturday night. Saturday night is a zoo. Even Friday night has become the same zoo. I actually yep. enjoy both of those sessions, but that's because I like sadistic people watching. Yeah. Uh, but if you're there for the beer experience, then that's not the best idea. Oh, no. Another tip I have is... You know, I know you're all there for the big names, and, and you've heard about this beer, and, you, and it's your, maybe it's your only chance to try it. So um, I'm not going to tell you not to do that, because maybe you won't get those beers. What I will say is don't spend all your time doing that. My model actually always is to go where there are no lines, uh, or very, very few lines. And I'm telling you, nowadays, I am rarely disappointed. I usually end up finding the brewery that everyone ends up talking about. Right, right. Especially, or that wins a medal. Right. You know. And then the the, uh, the paid servers always wear, like, the server T-shirt. If there's people pouring beers there or around there, 
in a, in a short line, they're probably the brewers or the right. salespeople, or the people that are with the brand. Right. So you, you can talk to them about the beer, too. You get a better experience, it's yeah. much better experience. And, and there's just... You know, beer in America is, is just so much better now. It yeah. used to be I would do the same model and I would drink a bunch of bad beer. Uh, I, just <laughs> didn't, I just didn't want to wait in line. And now I get to not wait in line. And I'm telling you, I always discover some really amazing breweries. Exactly. So, I, I, you know, hit the ones that you feel like you can't miss because you're never going to get them again and, and stand in that line by all means. But the rest of the time, you don't have to do that anymore. Right. Um, or you the, can flash your badge and then uh, go right behind the yeah, line. Yeah. The Brewers Guild thing that they've instituted That's or nice. implemented, I should say, in the last few years is really nice because, uh, like our guest mentioned tonight, um, you get all these guilds from different states where they pour several beers that, again, you might not get to have. Yeah. And the lines there tend to be a little shorter, too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bit of a crowded it's a nice area. area. Visit but, that area for sure. Yeah. Um, Drink a lot of water. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and don't go to the strip clubs. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, I'm not, uh, no. I'm not now, saying now, that. Now, Bevo. Now, let's not give out uh, uh, poor advice on no, this, that's, on that's, this program. That's just dumb. Yeah. And make sure you come by the BN booth and say hey to Bevo. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be there. And Sam will be there. Telling you don't go to the strip club. Uh, I'll be nice, and if you really want to go. That's fine. We, if you really want, we'll yeah, force Bevo we, to we go with us. Yeah, we get <laughs> a you BN map. Like we do every year. Like we do every year. <laughs> we need a BN map. <laughs> Just for the different strip clubs. Uh, the strip clubs are okay. They're not the best I've ever been to by any means, but they're all right. Pretty good oh, for steaks. Uh, you can. I don't eat at strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can get discount passes to them just by walking the streets of Denver because uh, they're always just out just there. Them so, out. You can, so you can get freebies. So that's some good strip club advice. Uh, in terms of events happening around the city, you know what? There, there's not like a preferred, or at least there's not several preferred spaces. What you need to do is uh, pay attention to the breweries that you like and, and maybe check out their websites because there are different events held that are fun to go to, but they're not always the same. There is the good one. I never get to go to it. I'm working, but the it's now like Crooked Stave and oh, a, a the rare. Beer. It's a sour beer. It's a festival within the GABF, yeah. just well, outside of it. Yeah, it's an event on Thursday night. On Thursday night, yeah. I think. And so, um, which is a great night to go to the GABF, too, by the way. You could do both uh, if you put your mind to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you guys have heard me on the show for years. Uh, I'm a sucker for the for Falling Rock. And oh, it's, okay. it's, it's overcrowded, and there's a lot of people there. They have since actually expanded their pouring capabilities into the larger parking lot area. So it was actually a lot better this year when i went but you know that might be the only place i don't mind standing in line for beer i just love that place there's always people there you know and it's a good crowd and yeah people are, you know, appreciate yeah, if beer. you want to meet people that you've only seen their pictures or just hanging out there and they're, just, they're just hanging out it's there you're going to stand it's around there. going i'm pretty sure that's sam calagione i'm pretty yeah. sure that's sully's big head i'm pretty sure that's tasty over there exactly. i'm pretty you're any night you go that's the experience you're going to have i've so. got a lot of people there yeah so there you go. That's our uh, GABF um, rundown for you. Oh yeah. I uh, hear some uh, topic positive feedback. Yeah. Um, from I don't know who he didn't say. Uh, oh no, Sorry. Taylor. There we go. There we go. Taylor. Uh, he says, "Hey guys, I've been listening to the show since 2012, and just wanted to say thank you and thank you again for doing what you guys do. I have a great life, and it's not like this show is all I have. <laughs> I, I like this. I like this said. preface." Uh, <laughs> But I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that when a new episode of the session pops up in my feed, a huge smile crosses my face because I know I've got another two to three hours of brewing gold ready for my enjoyment. So seriously, the Brewing Network is some of the most quality uh, entertainment education available out there, and uh, nobody delivers it quite like you guys. And that goes for podcasts in general. I always try to spread the word about the BN, although the word is usually there before I, uh, I arrive. So he says, J.P., Strong work hosting. Oh, thank you. Beardy, uh, who's not here, you're essential. Tasty and Doc, you're legends. Bevo, you're the woman of our dreams. And I was left out entirely. Uh, so, again, the BN is doing a fucking awesome job. What's his name? Uh, so, sincerely from Taylor uh, from the southern tip of Lake Michigan. Uh, also, he says, P.S., the August Shell interview was one of the best the session has ever done. Wow. I don't know if yeah. I believe that. No, I think it was good. It was good. Really good. 
All right, here's a spam of the week. Did you put this in or from a listener? No, no, I put it in. You put it in. Because uh, then there's feedback after. It's the first good. Dude, that. all the all the spam has now turned into spam report, where it's like, it's just a weird, like, Ouroboros of fucking spam. It's Ooh. just a secular. Anyway, but this is pretty good. Well, this one's good. Don't click um, the link. I know. I, I wanted to. I was <laughs> okay, like, well, me too. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> hi. That's how it's written. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw your photo on the CL. Which is the Craigslist, I, I, guess. I guess. yeah, sure. I saw yeah, your photo on the Craigslist yeah. and realized that we live alone near in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives alone near in my house? <laughs> Fucking we do, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I need a mousetrap. I think Kate lives alone near in my house right <laughs> now. I would like to spend a night with you. Be a suitable place where we can meet. I will absolutely be a suitable place where we can, <laughs> right. we can meet inside you. In my alone house. Yeah. Therefore, I have picture on here sent from my iPhone 7. <laughs> this is one of the better spams we've got. That's probably the ones to click on it. All right. And finally, uh, here's a show idea. Uh, hey, everybody. I've been listening to you guys for a few years and enjoyed all your antics sprinkled with beer knowledge. Uh, I noticed... Uh, <laughs> Just a little bit... I noticed a significant improvement on my beer quality within weeks of starting listening to you guys. Mostly Palmer and Jamil. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to put my money where my beer is and enlist as a private in the BN Army. Oh. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, the reason for this email is to give you an idea for someone you could interview for the show. Huh. They are Escuchion Brewing Company. Okay. I think I've pronounced that right. He put it phonetically. No, you suck that. That doesn't help much. That's his phonetic. Fine. Escooch Eon in Winchester, Virginia. Uh, They opened up around the same time I started listening to you guys, and their beers are amazing. The head brewer is definitely a quirky guy with a lot of interesting ideas on different ways of making beer, and they use a concrete egg fermenter in some of their beers. Uh, He's still experimenting with it and seeing what flavors he can get from it. So. All right, there's a show idea, and you can send your show ideas to feedback, or you can send them to Bevo at thebrewingnetwork.com. You send feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com, and you JP at JP. That's right. Uh, okay. Well, that was fun. Quirky. It's a, a good time, feedback. right? How was that for you? Was it, was it a good entry back into feedback? I yeah. felt like it, yeah. It's pretty good, right? I like really it. There well. was a lot there. Yeah. Um, hey, you can go to craftbeer.com, and they've got a great brewery finder. Uh, there's more than 5,000 breweries in the U.S. right now, and craftbeer.com brewery finder, published by the Brewers Association, has them all. It's the most robust U.S. brewery finder, whether you're traveling or exploring your own city. You can find breweries by current location or search in other states. You'll find directions and contact info straight from the brewery finder. You'll also find brewery social handles on the brewery finder, so you can keep up on the latest news from your favorite breweries go to craftbeer.com and check out the brewery finder all right i love those guys at craftbeer.com how's our twitter game doing twitter game's good man we're ready for it if you want i i think i'm ready blast right. us uh so the question was we are opening a winery because why not and then uh what will it be called yeah What's our okay. Brewing Network winery called? <clears throat> so uh, Casey wrote in, and uh, this person, yeah. male or female, who who knows? Yeah. Casey with a K. K like Pat? The, yeah. <laughs> Is it a guy or girl? Chris. It's Pat. Mm-hmm. Um, Bevo Bordeaux. Uh, and Sounds then they, right, and available in cans at your nearest Target. Very hoary. <laughs> <laughs> available in cans at your. Was that his tagline or yours? No. no, no. Okay, I like the tagline yeah. better than the name. I also like wine in the can. <laughs> she likes in the in can. a can, not the can, Bev. In the can, or maybe a butt chug. I don't know. <laughs> sure. I like wine in the can. <laughs> yeah. Do Shit. you mean in a can? No, I mean empty the bottle into my butt. Yeah. It's a party. <laughs> That's not what I meant. No, that's what you said. Uh, John A. says uh, <laughs> the Shigon Winery. Okay. I like oh, that. It's two for Bev right there. Bev's dropping some... Uh... Anyway, uh, some Clayton, serious Clayton writes in, says, call it the Whining Network. I, you know... Which wouldn't really change anything, but it would be, but it would be more appropriately titled. 
It's like cool whip. I would have given credit for that one, but right when you said the Twitter game, that's the one I thought of. So yeah. if Why it's not, not smarter than me, I, it's not good. <laughs> well, set the low bar. All right, uh, Ron Barnes says if Justin's making the wine, call it sour grapes. The world's first sour aged wine program. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Kelly Avery says the grapes of wrath. No. Very highbrow. No. Rathing. Okay, we'll take you out. Sorry, Kelly. Sorry, Again, Kelly. you might be a guy or girl. Strong effort. I don't know. Uh, William. Now, I know this is a girl. William writes in, and she says, the grapery. These grapes will make you bust a nut. Not eligible for BA awards. Okay. I don't get it. Bust a nutter. I'll just leave that out. Um, <laughs> another lady called Will says, the growing network, because you grew grapes. No, is this how no, jokes stop, work? Stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, I like the at least the ending was there. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then Brian Chapin writes in and says the rare barrel. Then called John from the Beer Law Center. Okay. All right. What was the first Bevo one? The first Bevo one is called Bevo Bordeaux. Available in cans at your nearest Target. All right, I just really like that one. <laughs> Me too. Uh, that one Ryan, that can one? we just leave it there? All right, yeah. there we go. Uh, All right, yeah. Good yeah. job, Casey. It's the least horrible. Well done on the tagline. I want to just uh, s- tell people that taglines are important. And <laughs> <laughs> they sure are, especially in marketing. Uh, well, it lets us know, yeah, that you know your customer, which in this case was Bevo, <laughs> available <laughs> at your nearest Target in Cannes. Um, all right. Let's see. What do we have here? The Orange County Mashups and Windsor Homebrew Supply are proud to announce their first annual homebrew crawl competition. The winners of this extract-only competition will have a chance to brew with either Barley Forge Brewing Company in... um, uh, Sorry, Barley Forge Brewing Company or Gunwale Ales. Um, These winning beers will be served at the first annual homebrew crawl in Costa Mesa, California on November 4th. If you're interested in entering, check out ocmashups.org slash register by September 1st. Cheers from Jason Petros. (laughs) (laughs) That was just the email. That was just the email, yeah. Okay. Um, He's going to say that stuff. So you get a little homebrew... um, Heads up. Little homebrew things, dude. Don't forget, you can get uh, the best brewing software in existence over at beersmith.com. Just go to beersmith.com, and our friend Brad over there makes the best product you can imagine. Um, In fact, you can't even imagine the things that he's built into that program. Right. It'll do everything you can... Like I don't care what kind of like Frankenstein Frankenstein he system imagined. you've built, he can you can put it into his software, yeah. and it will uh, it will measure everything for you. It'll tell you what you're doing. It will help you calculate it all. Um, it's basically the Matrix. I'm thinking it really is. It's like the Matrix for homebrew. <laughs> so go to beersmith.com, get your free 21 day trial, so you don't have to take my word for it, and then buy the fucking thing because you're going to love it. Blue pill. And you should pill. buy from him because he's just the nicest man in the is world. He? He's a really nice guy. He's just the nicest guy. <laughs> I feel bad sometimes because he's so nice, and I'm just like in a shitty mood, and I'm like, Brad, <laughs> I got to well, go. I'll bother him by talking about guess. some ideas for the software and stuff like that. Oh, he puts he, up with me so nice. Oh, he loves that too. I yeah. would imagine. He, right. He's a really he's a good guy. Uh, Beer smith.com check it out and then adam and eve.com you can use coupon code bn army and um you can get dicks and vaginas and blow up dolls and, and, you need DVDs and you got a whole fort. they got a thing for you. yeah you got a thing they got it free shipping when are they gonna have sex robots uh, that's well technology has to catch up with adam and eve have oh you, it's happening it's have you happening. gone to are their there, website lately are there <laughs> no but i keep and maybe you're never here when we do this but uh-huh. I, I keep trying to get bev to get us a tour of, of their, oh, not yeah. of no, not of her. Oh, um, oh yeah, the facility. Of the Adam and Eve, yeah, the where, and she refuses to do it. Would you? Can you check her, your girl, for a second, please? Yeah. Why are Air we checker. not working on an Adam and Eve tour? Oh, bam! Come oh. on. <laughs> Okay, first of all, because I think it's in, like, North Carolina or something, Done. right? You know, I they could probably write this there. off. Oh, we could do that. Like, yeah. as in Asheville, North Carolina? Yeah. Or so. No, as in, like, Raleigh, North Carolina. No. It's Raleigh. probably close she enough. No. I drove know. past it. You it drove, might not have even... Oh, yeah, you drove past the warehouse. But I would that's still, how this came up. But I'm yes. not sure. Actually, I'm not sure if that's if I'm, if I'm that's the right state. But I know I drove past oh, it on a long... It's in North Carolina. It is North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're all there. Come on. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, guys, if you really like plan a trip, I'll do my due diligence, but I'm not going to plan for you to have a tour for See, a trip that's never going to happen. She's terrible. Mm. 
She's no. really bad at this. Or she already, she's you're, actually you're great. already nagging this. And Come you're on. stupid. <laughs> Stop nagging this. Can we just have a tour of your toy drawer? Just call me. I said nag. That, Sorry. And, I'm sorry. You're, you're, right. Right. you're right. That was inappropriate. Your two toy drawers. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a chest now. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The steamer yeah. trunk. Can we, yeah, can we have a tour of the trunk of your car? <laughs> I'm really glad you're back. <laughs> Thank you. It's, you know those pods? It's a yeah. pod. Yeah, it's a, it's now a can pod. Can you just stop talking? Yeah. <laughs> Sam, I'm in a mood. Oh, I'll get the key to the pod. <laughs> Yeah. Drawer seven, uh, line five. God, Bevo, you are such ten. a whore. I hate, you I, I hate you. You know the end of uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, yeah, Ark? the big, the yeah. big warehouse? That's what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I imagined it, it is. actually turns out none of our <laughs> listeners have bought from Adam and Eve since they started. The reason they've stuck with us is Bevo keeps putting in the fucking coupon code. <laughs> Weekly, multiple times. They have like 18,000 products and she has 16,000 of them. Yeah. 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 Don't That's why she's so broke all the time. They're like, oh they're like we I'm have not a, broke all the time. We have a and million orders you. from Crockett, California, and one from uh, Minneapolis. <laughs> like that's like we have a, all of the history. Yeah, there's there, there's one um, post office worker that is <laughs> being kept on the payroll specifically for her orders Just to hit the button. Just yeah. to carry these giant packages down my shitty walkway. <laughs> They know. Uh, she shows up with a smile. Bevo, party time! <laughs> well, I think that's why she's so bitchy on the air because all of her her um, the happy chemical, whatever it is, <laughs> is, is all used up. Yeah, at home in orgasmo, right? <laughs> in her, you don't yes. know. I could. Ha- Never mind. I'm not feeding this. I'm you not might. playing into this. <laughs> I'm not oh, going to continue on. this. That's too bad. Mess. <laughs> How many orgasms would you say you have a week, <sighs> Bevo? Hi. And now, with or without Sam, because Sam it doesn't matter. Oh, we're starting with a week. A week. Okay. Per week. Give me an accurate assessment. No, I don't have to. Six. A week. It's seven <laughs> days. <laughs> then she does it. Four. I'm not answering. No. More I than predict six. more than six a week. Nice. Don't judge me. I love you. No, no, See, I don't it's judge not you. a I've judgment. It's an you. applauding. Yeah. Sweet. I, See, this is why you're our girl, Bebo. Don't tell Taryn that. Okay. Uh, no, go they're not th- all from Sam. I know. That's why I said oh, with or without fine. Sam. And that's this is what I like about you is I was sure. And also, why am I talking? <laughs> <laughs> As your attorney, I advise you not to. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, uh, stop it right He has now. nothing to do with this. All right. Go to adamandeve.com. Use coupon code B-N-A-R-M-Y and be as happy as Bebo. <laughs> I'll have They all sent the me that tag. I didn't make it up. They, Adam and Eve wrote that for me. Shut up. Um, Adam and Eve doesn't communicate with you anymore. That's <laughs> true. I don't have to. It's, it's the other way around. They communicate with me because I'm their biggest buyer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're like Bevo. VIP how's, staff. How's things going over there? Are you unha- are you unhappy with us? We haven't heard from you. Do they you fly in a the while. jet out for you? Yeah, they, I was gonna say she, they probably have a private jet to take her and airdrop her so she can walk. It's, it's like shaped like a dildo. It's like you ever, remember those. Uh, it was like a uh, some like Michael Jackson special on 60 Minutes years ago where he walks into a shop like a super expensive shop, shuts it down, and he just goes and he points at shit. Yes, I remember that. That's what it would be. That's what it <laughs> yeah. is like. Uh, when she goes to the Adam and Eve warehouse. I yeah, think we could point <laughs> rack. at least for the video, I think we could arrange this. I think so, too. We'll be like, look, guys, this is going to work for you. This is definitely going to work for us. Right. <laughs> We're going to do this video. Oh, yeah. And it'll be something where Bebo just walks in like a queen. Something that we both enjoy. So do they send the Adam or the Eve jet? Good question. Whatever Bebo desires. Oh, okay. She's the queen. All right. Eve in. Adam out. I think our work here is done. You know, staff yeah. members listen to this show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you find it some better. Hey, buttons. you're the one who's throwing numbers out there. That's right. More than six. Right. <laughs> what ratio are from <laughs> Sam? For <laughs> microphone. But my guess is like, if Sam's lucky, not if Vivo's lucky. Oh, if oh, yeah, yeah. Sam's lucky, right? Three. Maybe. Oh, my from God. Sam. No, you don't think that many? That's a lot. 
Well, well, technically, you didn't say specifically. I was thinking two. Sam. You were thinking maybe two. But being generous. Sam yeah. Moore. Like, we're talking about the same Sam. I know, but Sam. Not just another guy called Sam. You know, it turns out people like Sam. Like, I know we don't. Like, sexually? Yeah. I've really? talked to chicks, and they're like, actually, Sam's an attractive guy. And I'm like, no, no, Sam. <laughs> right. Sammy. Sam Ewell. Sammy. Right. And no, it, he must have a thing. You know, sometimes, like, you, you, it's like a. It's more charisma, an essence, or yes, something. Right? Sam must have a thing. He's not an right? ugly People dude. Like chicks kind of like Sam, like a cute pony. I'm not I, saying all the chicks. Don't get me wrong. I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, we've been married almost ten years. You barely I don't like know. him. <laughs> He's still smiling. So no, that's yes, right. I think I think girls like Sam. But he's a very nice person, and I think he's attractive, and he looks. A lot younger than he is, and I think all that works for him. Yeah, and then I think he probably forces himself upon and his wife is six times hot. a week, and she allows it three times. That's what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, if I was if I were nicer to Sam, it it would be more. It would be more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just not that nice. And then you're like, here, hump this. <laughs> Just I've, I've put this thing here. I'm going to here. bed. It's yeah. a wooden stump. <laughs> but I want you to just hump that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't sand down the inside. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it so, hurts. And that's good. the other thing. Sam's very forgiving, so yeah. it's like it's all right. Thank you for thinking of me. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate the wooden stump. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next week, Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company on the show. I do believe I'll be back as well. They will be and, in studio. Um, uh, oh, in studio. Great. Be in studio. Okay. Oh, boy. We could do some beer news, but... Right now? No, no. We we're out of here. No. Um, we are... There were some big acquisitions. Were there? Yeah. Mm. Magnolia got bought. Ah, Saved is how I read it. Well, that's yes. If we knew the backstory, yes, for sure. We had got, reported on it, I did. think, some time ago. We did. That, uh, they um, it took out so much money to open the new place that um, just kind of put them in a more than precarious yeah. position. They were in trouble. Well, we can talk about it next week if you Let's want to. Let's do but, that. Yeah. Um, but it's a good tease. Ooh. Ooh. Well done. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, well done. Yeah, well done. All right, guys. Hey, thanks again for holding down the fort and doing such a great job. It, it means a lot to me. Yeah, uh, JP, I know you've been doing a killer job, uh, uh, and I appreciate that. Thanks. Tasty, uh, you, you step up wet, right where it needs to be. Uh, Doc comes and sleeps here every now and then. You know, uh, it's so, just the way I am. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, Beav, I'm sure you did what you did. <laughs> ooh, ow, ooh. I kid. You've been booking a great show and doing whatever else you do. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Really having orgasm. Uh, it's nice of you. <laughs> too busy back there orgasming. All right. To, uh, you know, it used to be like... Okay, stop. Uh, <laughs> That's where all the batteries go. Whenever I, whenever I text you, you go, where the fuck are the big D batteries? Ben's been here for three hours before me. I'm the like, Bevo, the label maker takes a 9 volt. I don't know what you're asking me for. I need 220 outlet. I need a 2... Two two twenty outlets. Two twenty. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to glare so hard, but I'm laughing. Uh, it's true. All right, JP, not- get us out of here. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you to our show sponsor, More Beer. You can get absolutely everything you need to make great beer at home by going to morebeer.com. The boys from Motorworks Brewing in Florida sent us what is probably a literal ton of beer to match the ton of information they delivered. So thanks to them, find out uh, find them at motorworksbrewing.com. Merge your love of Disneyland with your lack of engaging podcasts and go to earsuppodcast.com as JP, Terrence, Bevo, and Taryn talk about all things Disney. Get on Twitter for some good beer inside and homebrew info. Follow Nate Smith at Nate Nathan, uh, Nathan Homebrew, Mike McDowell at Tasty McD, Warren is stuck over at another Beardy, and the great Beverly is crushing cyberspace at Bevo One. JP thinks Twitter is dead, and you should follow him on Instagram at Major Jip. Today's show was produced by Bevo, and your host has been Justin Crossley. Be sure to find the Brewing Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. JP's an asshole, Justin's a nice guy, and when